So, all right, diving back in. First of all, many, many thanks to Sword Coast Soundcape, Soundscapes. Wow, that's a toughie. For <clears throat> their wonderful uh, background music, BGM, which we'll be using for a period of time. If you're not supporting them on Patreon, you definitely should. Uh, outside of that, that's really all that I have in terms of announcements. So, let's dive back into what happened last time. You all were navigating through the Zonthal Tower maze, making your way through the extra planar space, attempting to follow the shadows of a sundial, or your own shadows, depending on whoever was le leading at any given time. Just, just follow. This way looks good. <laughs> this is a good direction. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, we've gone this way the past two, and we don't know if it's good or not. But so let's but we're keep not doing dead, it. So let's do it again. Right. It's let's worked keep so far. doing it. Uh, you all eventually found your way into a narrow garden that filled with eight strange-looking flowers and a fountain <coughs> in the center. While Boris was inspecting one of the flowers, Balasar attempted to shoot firebolts at them because he was bored. He didn't attempt. He did. You're right. He did. <laughs> Two firebolts successfully uh, went off, as it were, and connected with the strange organic plant-like material, causing them all to rise and strike you, so combat ensued. Uh, you all made it out <coughs> fairly effectively. Uh, some of you being grappled. Actually, all of you at one point were grappled uh, by these strange plants. After felling these foes, gathering the pearls from their uvula-like lo locations, you all navigated out of the maze following Boris's hunches uh, with both the sundial and the hedges. I would, did we follow the hunches if he <coughs> just did it? I call that a hunch. Uh, Fleetfoot, wrapping himself in a carpet and diving through a sundial, only to emerge flopping onto the ground prone. It worked. <laughs> While the rest of you continue to follow Boris, making his way through the maze. You all then eventually found yourself standing in front of the large tower created by the wizard Zonthal. Looking to the peak, you noticed a massive extra-dimensional balcony where... Fleetfoot and Tyberon, well, mostly Fleetfoot, bringing Tyberon with him, attempted to dimension door to the very top of the tower. It was unsuccessful. As you all emerged, landing rather roughly on the ground at the base of the tower once more. After some loose inspection of the tower itself, you all made your way to the open door, Boris pushing it open, finding the carnage inside. Changing music because I want to. Finding the carnage inside uh, before finally beginning to navigate your way through the hallways. And this, as you find yourself on the black tile floor of Zonthal's tower, within a sitting area, the bodies and corpses littering the floor around you, what looks to be some sort of strange caked blood on the walls, and a narrow hallway leading to what seems to be at this distance a dead end with flickering embers of a torchlight. Moving down the hallway, you find yourself inside Zonthal's tower. The doors behind you close. What would you like to do? Boy, that always happens. I guess we should probably... torch? <laughs> Boris holds the torch in front of him. Looking around... Start you looking around. You gotta give me an investigation check, Boris. I can't wait for you to fill in Fleetfoot and Balasar when they arrive. <laughs> the players off. are on their way back now. Wait a minute. Where's my description? <clears throat> Who built the place? Zonthal. Like, well, okay, but did he use... Oh. The, it's... In Ruin or a Dungeon, I can use its original purpose, determine its builders, like, so do I, do I get any more information just from being so I would say, like that? So I would say the investigation check will determine how much you get of that as well. But I can give you the sole purpose of the dungeon easily. Investigation, I got uh, 14. 14? So, this tower slash ruin slash dungeon, because it does fit all of those descriptions at some point was intended to house all of Zonthal's experiments in 
Arcana. You are not sure <clears throat> what sorts of experiments he was conducting, but you do know that those experiments ranged schools of magic, some of which had not been established yet. He was trying to expand on things that were maybe not necessarily um, created yet. You would also notice through your search that you are within a strange, fully enclosed room. There are no other hallways, there are no other doorways that lead anywhere in the structure. But at the end of the hallway that you are in, you notice a dust and a black dust and, and, and stone rubble covered circle that is carved into the ground with various runes. At the... <clears throat> Does it look like something Leaf used to do? Uh, it would look similar, but far more permanent. Okay. So would I, would I know what that is? Give me an Arcana check, because it is a little bit off and different from what you would have seen from Leaf. Okay, okay so you're ready? 11. I guess. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I found. You know the magics, and you, th you think it's <coughs> transportation, you but you're not sure where. Okay. And do I get anything about what that thing is for? You would know that this is for, based on the the, based on what you know about the maze, your initial uh, insight into the tower, you would know that those. I'm gonna have to edit that out. <laughs> Gentle motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought we were still in the woods. Uh, thwam. Uh, you would know that these, Zonthal is all about efficiency and travel uh, and any sort of quick travel that he can, he can possibly make, meaning that these are circles used in the transportation of individuals. You notice that as you stare at the stone circle on the floor in front of you, on the wall behind, as you hold your torch and illuminate the wall behind, there is a carved and inlaid iron uh, rectangle that is inset into stone with strange frame and filigree uh, of granite that surrounds it. On it there are nine symbols. At the very top okay. there is... Oh, oh. This, you don't know none of this! <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Horus <laughs> is doing these inspecting. Oh, okay. At the top the symbol is a chair. It is a carved chair. Okay. Beneath that, there are two chairs that seem to be facing each other at a three-quarter degree, uh, uh, three-quarter degree turn. Uh huh. Beneath that, what looks to be an upside-down L, capital L. Beneath that, a rectangle that's about four inches by two inches. Below that, a flame. Below that, a five-pointed star. Below that, a cube. Below that, an hourglass. And lastly, a isometric triangle. A fully perfect triangle. <laughs> not a right triangle, but an isometric triangle. It's not a cube, it's not obtuse. That's my job. You know how long it's been since I've taken a geometry class. It's an isometric triangle, gang. Equal Every on all angle sides. Is 45 degrees perfectly. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and those are what you notice. Huh. This place is really interesting. Care to share with the class? Can't see it? Look, there's all over the place. First off, you know this guy who made this? Kind of a little crazy. He likes to think different from everybody else, so there's probably weird shit all over the place. Nice. And magic stuff. I am on board. He's all about the magic stuff, so be on the lookout, but there's no way out. Up here? I mean, look, there's no exit, see? There's no, no doors. Right, you to... fell through a sundial. No, we walked through a door that closed behind us right here, I'm see? I'm not... No, what I'm saying is that before... We just fell through a sundial, and now we're here. But we were still outside. You can go anywhere when outside. I 
thought the, that's why we didn't toss you up. You don't get it. We're stuck in the room, but there's map here. That's and circle on floor with thingamajigger that we should probably do something about to get out of this room. Those are symbols or a map? That, yes, that's map for, for, for circle thing. There's how many symbols? Nine? Nine. How many schools of magic are there? More than one. Less than a hundred. There's a lot. I think. <laughs> Give I me an arcana check <laughs> to see how much you would know. 18. You would know that there are. I have to count now. Why couldn't you roll low? So the, the known schools of magic, there are. I'm there just looking at the map. Chair, then two chairs, then upside down L and Chair, then two chairs. Is that a box? <laughs> yes, then a four by two rectangle, inches, not so feet. Two chairs. Is that what you're saying by chairs? I just cannot draw a chair very well, so I just write chair. But the rest of it I draw fairly well. Except fire. Fire looks shit, so I wrote fire next to it. An hourglass scoops. looked like a bad porn drawing. Did you share the bit about how he was trying to create his own school of magic? Would you have shared that? He's no, just he's just crazy yeah. wizard guy thinks outside of the box. That, that would be what Forrest would translate trying to find new schools of magic uh -huh. to. Mark? So it's so. Could this have something to do with the schools of magic? I mean, if they're all stacked on top of each other. Or is that the tower map? Is that is that? Am I following what you mean with the map? I guess I would think chair at top and then two chairs. I don't know what that would be. Well, a chair at the top would be his throne. Right, but what is the two chairs under looking that like? It's like if you took a chair here and here and went. And made them face each other. Yes. So like king and queen. So like so that throne room. Sure, maybe, but then what the hell is but the chair up here? Big throne. And then what's the L underneath it that's upside down? And what, then the okay, square. On, and then this on. is this. Let's start from the bottom. Whoever we'll carved away. that was much better than me because his fire is much better than mine. Well, he probably had a lot of practice or magic. So let's start at the bottom. The bottom symbol. Okay, so let's stand on the circle and go triangle. Go. What do you mean, go triangle? Say triangle? I don't know. We haven't triangle. figured that much out yet. I wish we were. <laughs> so, do you all stand on the circle? I, is that? I'm gonna watch for it. So, yes. what, what you do you all do? I'm gonna, huh? Can you detect magic? It's gonna light up like fucking Christmas. Mm, I would not, not detect magic in here. Yeah. It hurts. It would <laughs> light us up like fucking Christmas. <laughs> it hurts. It's, it's quite magical. No, we, just we, in we general, the whole area. Do not see for like two hours. It sucks. <laughs> So, what are you guys doing? I'm, stand I'm standing on circle. on circle and thinking triangle. I'm standing on circle. You all see Boris close his eyes and concentrate. And then Just I push the button. <laughs> and then you push the button. <laughs> you all see him. <laughs> one eye opens. <laughs> reaches out slowly. Hand grazes the triangle. The triangle pulses a deep red. And Boris <laughs> disappears. Boris, <laughs> you appear... <laughs> Back at the sundial, facing the doorway. <laughs> Back at the sundial, facing the doorway? <laughs> yep. Like so outside? Nice. Oh, he... that makes sense. That's the lowest part. Where do you guys think he went? Should we go triangle? <laughs> do you go back to the door, hey, boys? Let's wait gonna, for something you, that. You wait all, for something to happen. As you are inspecting the wall and kind of contemplating where the fuck Boris has gone, Shit. you no. hear. Eh. Oh, shoot. <laughs> behind him, the door closes and Boris just walks back Boris. in. Boris. So the triangle takes you to the um, hourglass outside the front. There is an hourglass, though, yeah? Wait. So I meant sundial. the sundial. Oh, the sundial. I was thinking I was going to touch the hourglass next, and I so, just thought ahead of my mouth. So do we just go to the top? Yeah, let's push the top one. If that is how that works. Well, you, it's like an elevator, to, obviously, you, right? I just love that you all just watch. I imagine you all just sit there with bated breath, just to, looking at Boris, and Boris just... One eye open, hand <laughs> tentatively Not touches the, first the wall. Time Boris has <laughs> Boris <laughs> disappears. And then walks in like, okay. So step now I know done. where that goes. That goes. Wait, let me write. Trial of elimination. We'll <laughs> see you now. Good thing we didn't start at the top. And just complete disregard for this magic user. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um, okay, so are we going hourglass or chair? Well, let's pick the top one. 
We should go to the top, right? But what about all the stuff on our class? Well, should we? I mean, I guess we've not really seen anything that would know we were here or come after us. Unless they could tell when we tried to dimension door to the top. I mean, Forrest, what do you think? You're the uh, you're the relic hunter. Oh, I'd love to see the whole damn thing. So you're saying we go for Hourglass? I go for Blue Light Special at Hourglass level next. I guess we're going Hourglass then. All right. <laughs> hourglass it is. <laughs> do we all have to think Hourglass? Or does no. just one of us? You have to think very, very hard, and only you. Okay. Only one person has to think each time. Okay, you, I will think for Hourglass. Are you sure? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I just think, do what I'm I did last think time. Hourglass. You Two. all gather on the circle as Boris waits for Fleetfoot and Tyburn to close their eyes and begin thinking about the hourglass. You know, theoretically, hourglass could be right here where we are, but let's see. <laughs> Boris reaches out, touches, it flares a light blue, and you all, <laughs> Balasar, you and Boris, witness the runes below you flare a bright blue. You guys get this strange. From below you, like when your eyes are closed and the light just becomes too much to bear beneath you, uh, your eyes open suddenly and you all phew, find yourself standing in a very dimly lit corridor. There are bodies of dead individuals all around you as you land in this nope. room. Not same place we were. Uh, no, you wanted to see what was here. So I'm guessing as you look that in this the triangle was the last one. As you look in this <laughs> rectangular room that's about 20 feet by 10 feet. God damn it, Boris. Uh, you see Where are we? a trail of blood. <laughs> I don't know. That's what's fun. There's a door at the back end. A massive 10 foot tall and uh, 10 foot tall door. There are two of them. They're about four and a half feet wide, uh, making up a massive oak doors that are currently closed, but the trail of blood certainly leads in that direction. What are the bot? Like, are uh, they give just me a medicine check. No runes or anything below us, like we've just appeared. You, as you appear, you see yourself staring at the very similar circle, and on the side of the wall, there is once again the same sort of setup in terms of symbols on the side of the wall. 13. Uh, 13, okay. You notice that at least two of these were killed by what looked to be bolts of magical force that you've seen individuals u- use in your traveling. Did you say the same thing. elevator symbols were on the wall? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, if you are too scared, you can go back to triangle. Yeah, your teleporting elevator. Your elevator. What are you talking about? Nothing good. There is trail of blood. There is uh, always good things at the end of trail of but blood. But like, are the are bodies traps human, like, or at least something for you? Okay. Ellen, are the <laughs> bodies human, Elvin? Um, with your <laughs> medicine check, I would say that there's one there that is, is either elvish, the treasure that human, somebody forgot the that is or did the not figure out how to get. Are back they wearing cult that material? That you now get to get back, or something fun to kill. Uh, here it is a variety of blue and green. Two blue, one green. Oh, He's just Star Lord. And bolts of magic had Can't. killed them. <laughs> the last happy happy to looks be to have here. a dagger that's been stabbed into his back and then removed, but you aren't aware of what else. Just be. happy to be around. <laughs> what was your investigation check? Oh, a six. A six? Um, there's a lot of blood, and the door is locked. So, do I... I'm assuming I can't keep using historical knowledge for this. Can I go over to the door? You are in a. You're technically in a dungeon. You now <coughs> recognize the locale as Zonthal's tower is three separate pieces: the maze, the tower, and the dungeon. You recognize this vicinity as the dungeon section. We oh, are definitely in the dungeon. Have I seen like? We should keep going. Going, going like, to investigate. Divisions. Thank you. From like visions or like from the cloak. Horrible. Is any of it like? I will tell you for the first time since Dawn in the Cloak, you feel almost no tether. Interesting. Can I go over to the door? If you'd like to, yeah. You said it's closed? Yes. Can I investigate the door you to can see if there's look. anything that looks yeah, for sure. out of ordinary? Just just check. And you investigated the room? Yeah, I'm just investigating the room. I got a big old six. Big old six. It's a dark room, a lot of blood, dead bodies, locked door. I'm going to stand. 22. The door is solid oak. Very, very thin. Thick. Um, two iron bars wrap itself uh, around the door on the front entryway, leading to a lock in the center. It is held fast. With that check, I would say from the other side of the other side of the door, you can just barely make out this grinding sound of what looks like stone and boulders constantly moving. 
There's something behind this door that's moving. Do we want to unlock it or do we want to leave it as it is? Leave I'll it. unlock it for you. Leave. No, Bally. Maybe let's let's leave it. I already have my lockpick out. But what? We really <laughs> got to go kill. <laughs> we we really have to go kill a, a dragon, and in near in vain. That's really why we're here. It could be the dragon on the other side of the door. It doesn't sound like a dragon. But you don't know that. We have to go. Yes, through I do. All three parts <laughs> of this craziness. This, this is, is the, the dungeon. Part. Yeah. Do we have to go through the dungeon? Oh, or we have course. an elevator. Yeah. We have an elevator. We should at least see what's on the other floors before we commit to one. We're not committing to anything. We're seeing what's on this floor. How about all of these people died to get behind that door? Or all of these people got dumped here. I guess I... I... That lock looks like it needs picking. There... <laughs> Balasar, 2019. <laughs> Since when do you wait for anything? All right, I'll go pick it. Do the <laughs> bodies look? I know. I guess medicine, medicine, check. medicine check. Twenty-one for your sleight of hand check. Are you proficient in the tools? Yeah. What the fuck? It's okay. Suddenly, I didn't know that. Suddenly, about sixteen. Sixteen. I saw that. <laughs> it was saw, almost a one. I saw. Wow. I saw. It go, uh, never mind. <laughs> these bodies are the same age as the bodies on the exterior of the tower. About They're a week. Numbers. So does it look like? Can I see? Like, were they shot from the door out, or were they like? Is well, it from behind? Do it. They, they are shot, road. and the bolts find themselves planted in the back. And the dragonborn individual, nice. uh, the green dragonborn wearing the green robes, has a stab wound in the back as well. What I'm at, does it look like they were chased out the doors and were shot as they were leaving? Their bodies are prone and lying in various directions. It's difficult to make way. out. Okay. So with I'm that, I'm still going to stay on the uh, elevator. Dallas, are you move over, kind of pushing in front of Tybron and Boris, and I'm you going to step the back from and the you... door and draw an arrow because the door unlocks. I'm going to draw my swords while I open the door. You uh, and you. Looking inside, you are in a platinum vault. There's just just money platinum. everywhere. You see blood streaking the floor first, including the smeared trail that's lead back to the teleportation chamber that you are currently in. There are a there's a second trail that you notice immediately of bloody foot uh, boot prints heading up the corridor towards the north. Standing amid the gore, almost coated in this, are three humanoid-looking figures. Two that look like misshapen statues of clay and earth roiling around it. And the third, as it turns eyes over the shoulder at you, just kind of... Appears to be humanoid made of elemental fire. And I'm going to need everybody to roll initiative. (sighs) We're about to die... I told Ooh. you, there's always something good Ooh. at the end of Blood Trail. Ooh. Ooh. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Plus six. Plus okay. five? <laughs> Nick's excited. <laughs> are these some, some gall? Oh, wait, these are elementals, aren't they? They are. Is it fire? And earth. And earth? Yeah, we need to get out of here. Oh, sorry. No worries. That's our map for the elevator, though. Was. We make it out here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm... Interesting I'm things I'm gonna, I'm to fight. Elevator out of here. Yeah, I'm not fighting these guys. I'm all up for a fight, but two Earth Elementals? Also, I'm loaded low on... Spells. On spells. For why? You all are in this hallway. Here. Oh, I backed away from the door. Please put way the fuck back. I was gonna say, yeah. where's the elevator at? Balasar is way the fuck up here. Oh, I was right with Balasar. Oh, you were? Oh yeah. You emerge into the room. I'm exploring, motherfucker. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well. Okay, that's. Let me go ahead and get this open. So. Twenty-five to twenty. Twenty-five. Wow! Um, look at 22. you. Twenty-two. Sweet foot. Twenty-five. Uh, Tybron, you said twenty-two. Yes. Twenty to fifteen. Nineteen. Eighteen. I'm 
mean, I have a couple. Okie dokie. So, as these <laughs> earth elementals turn to face you, the fire elemental kind of body flickering in flames, igniting, illuminating the space. What would you all like to do? Fleetfoot, you're up first. <laughs> mm, I would like to roll my eyes heartily. Um, uh, actually, what's what's that distance, you think? Under 240 feet. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm going to launch an Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast. You have a lot of those that you can launch. I have three of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And I can send them one to different targets. Uh, That's the truth. No, I'm just going to launch them all at the guy closest. You got it. Okay, so please roll to hit for me. Be a 23. 23 will hit. Please roll for damage. That's a 10. 19. 24. 24 points of damage as you. <laughs> this train's purple and black energy <laughs> launches from your form. Slamming into it. Just <laughs> well, you do damage. Just a deep rumble nice. of energy. Um, and then. Ooh, let me. I don't remember how many Barnacans break. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we took a short rest. You have to roll to hit with each bolt, though. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. So just roll like two more two times. Two more, yeah. That'd be a 22. That hits. And an 18. That hits as well. Okay, cool. They all hit. <coughs> I didn't realize I had to roll for each one. All right, you got it. So um, that'll be your turn. So, no, for my bonus action, I'm going to shout mm. at Boris, don't die. And that's my inspiration, too. Boris, you receive 1d10 inspiration. As you are bolstered by being uh, requested to not perish. You told me to not move. It's my job to tell you not to. You like me. Just don't die. (laughs) All right, Tybron, you're up. Um, (laughs) The the, the bolts of energy fly past you, and you kind of, oh, we're Uh, doing this? I guess uh, I'll, for my action, attack the same guy that Fleet just hit. Um, Is, Is it two earth, one fire? Two earth, one fire. With... Uh, earth, wind, and fire? No, just two earth, one fire. With sharpshooter on both shots. You got it. Roll for the light, please. fire guy the one on the back? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Sorry, I wasn't able to paint them. No, it's fine. I just want to make sure. You right. 19. 19 will hit. Roll for damage. And uh, the second one is 18. 18 will hit as well. Okay, so... Um, that's okay. Um... Sorry, can't remember how to do this. How do math? 2d8. So the one that you shot has taken damage, so you will be Colossus Slayer. For the first shot, 2d8 and d4. Um, That's 10, 19 points, uh, 29 points of piercing damage, and 4 points of cold damage. You got it. The second attack is... That's the first arrow. And it, you see it hit a crack and kind of glance off as the cold, icy energy glances up the joint and <coughs> shatters as he moves. The second shot is um, 25 points of piercing damage and points. three points of cold damage. The second shot hits the left arm and the shoulder joint once more, the ice <coughs> making its way over the shoulder as it kind of shuffles and <coughs> you see the ice <coughs> shatter off. Uh, anything else you want to do? I'm gonna run back by fleet. You <sighs> sprint Can back. We leave this ship. No. Balasar, you're up. Uh, I'm gonna run 30 feet forward. You got it. You run 30 feet forward. The blades, <laughs> lightning begins to glance off the blade itself. And I'm gonna cast frostbite at the fire elemental. You're gonna cast frostbite at the fire elemental. No, it's, uh, I need a constitution saving throw. Constitution save, okay. What's the, What am I trying to beat here? 16. Uh, that's an 11 plus 3 for a, a 14, so it fails. I bet you wish you had your snowball fight. Hmm. If 13 points of damage. 13 points of damage, okay. How hard are they to hit, guys? As it... Whoosh, Man. The ice kind of slams into it. It just kind of... The flame licks around it once more as it kind of... 
focuses on you. The the eternal burning of the eyes begin to the glare white hot, and the flames and smoke tend to shriek off its face. Um, that's gonna end my turn. All right, you got it, Boris. You're up. They rolled shit initiative, guys. Okey dokey. Imagine Boris says that every time before you go. Okey dokey. <laughs> All right, so who, who hit what? I hit this one. I hit that one. And I hit the fire engine. <clears throat> So the guy on the right's undamaged. Hmm. I wonder if we should do this hard way or easy way. Yes. We do it the hard way. I'm gonna hex the one that has not been touched yet. It, the shadowy energy <laughs> kind of billows around the large earth elemental in it. Did you bring that? Respect, bro. <laughs> and the, the camp comes up. The shadow it. begins to coalesce around it. I might just steal the flask halfway through this. <laughs> if anyone wants some bourbon, I got some nice bourbon. <laughs> And as the shadows coalesce, you see the Earth Elemental kind of look around, just as confused as an Earth Elemental can be. Which what would you like to do, Boris? This one? Yeah, yeah that, that one has you can, to touch. Yeah, I have the condition rings in that basket if you'd like to use it. Basket. <coughs> basket. I know what a basket is. You, just, you know what ballast are you Not doing? really, you don't. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my action to attack three shots, Vera. Yeah. First shot. Nah. Right, guy. Okay. This guy. All right. Incoming on the so shots fire. He is First hexed. shot. I'm going to. Watch my jigger. Uh, Sharp Sharpshooter. Okie dokie. And just. No, I have inspiration in case. You do. It's almost gone, too. No, oh, no, no, you don't. No, That's just plenty of time. I, was, I thought we had from the beginning. My apologies, gentlemen. Going to use that inspiration. Okay. Is it D10? Yep. Oh, good. Uh, so. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 21 minus... 22 minus 5 is... 17. 17? 17 just hit. <laughs> Inspired. <laughs> Wait a minute. How much do I roll? Okay, a lot. Yeah, you, I mean, it's a lot. I think it's like 22 or 23. It's 1d10 D6. plus 1d6 plus 10. I would like to 10. put like throw this one through the um, lightning barrel. Here, okay. Just no, as you... Designate the barrel and fire, fire. fire. aiming so slightly. You get 30. Points. Okay, so that is D10. 58. This is the second time you've used your element yeah, barrel. Yeah, I forget about that thing all the time. D10 plus D4? Yeah. Yep. 30. So I'm starting out at. It does increase the misfire by one, though, so you didn't roll a two, right? We just rolled 108 I'm not damage. Do that. I, think it's, I think it's dead. I mean, I did it <laughs> it's misfire is naturally a two, so we're not going to use yeah. the lightning. You would know that, so I would, I'm would. i okay right, with that. So, uh, 18 points of damage with the first <laughs> I one. I that was like the... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> 18 points of damage with the first bullet. All, of it. All right. Bullet damage piercing. Um, <laughs> yep, that's the one. Bullet damage, yes. The rocks nope. 18, shatters off. I get a yeah, D6 uh, necrotic. Four necrotic. Okay, that's good enough. Thank you. As you watch it kind of seep and the stone grows gray. Gray. Okay, next one. Here we go. Doing the same thing. Using an uh, elemental barrel? Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it right this time. I'm going to use the air elemental barrel, and I'm going to use the uh, dazing shot. Okay, dazing shot. Got it. So he will be disadvantaged on attacks till the end of his next turn if he fails a con saving barrel. And we're going to... <clears throat> it's a 23 on the con save. He makes it big time. Um, I literally rolled the same exact thing, I think. Yep. So misfire of three. Okay, good. Four. So, six. Ah, 13. Math is a wonderful No, thing. I used the, I missed this time. I used the inspiration. That's where my other 10 points came from. Yep. So sharpshooter. So I missed this time. So <laughs> fires off and the lightning. <laughs> arcs along the wall. Alright, and then this time I'm going to dead eye shot so I have advantage. Yeah. Natural 20. <laughs> you get your grip point back. <laughs> <laughs> and you <laughs> fire off. Uh, so that is D10. <laughs> I love how you just stared at it for everybody like, yeah, it's a natural 20. Uh, so that <sighs> is 11 times 2 is 22 plus 16 is 38. Very good. <laughs> Divided by two. No, I do not need to divide. No. 
uh, 38 points of damage with third bullet. 38 points of damage. Okay, as you <laughs> aiming ever so slightly, and you see Vera tone in and <laughs> and you see it <laughs> strike one of the uh, what was the eye sockets of this massive head and it splinters and <laughs> cracks. But you watch, watch this elemental <laughs> and rotate immediately towards you. Uh, okay, will that be your turn, Boris? Uh, mm. Well, I can move still. Yes, you can. <coughs> <laughs> Just move me like 15 feet back towards those guys and as a hey guys I got one coming for us why would <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> okay it, Boris it is now the earth elemental three turn. people in this party I've had to say that about all of them Thank controlled you, by me never being one of them. <laughs> being well you annoyed. you know we could just leave these assholes you right? weren't there when I tried to jump off a roof They're earth elementals. And they're but, going into the ground. But you know we can just leave, right? Like we, we might, got, we might want to. I, I just have to hit this button. <laughs> yeah. Come think, on, guys, get in fight. It'd be fun. Think about chair. Ooh, actually, they get double movement because they're gonna dash. Oh, where the fuck did he go? Uh, we will die. What? I didn't hit him. Oh, you're right. You did not. Ah! <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> Maybe we just shoot Boris. Maybe he's the bad guy. We can toss him. Maybe he's the big bad. Toss Maybe me. he's Tiamat reincarnate. <laughs> toss me. Toss me. Okay, I leave Don't now. You me. guys enjoy yourself then. Okay, no, no, so they're, they're going to dash. The one in front race. of you, the fire elemental, <laughs> moves up to you and just kind of <laughs> slices through. He's going to make two touch attacks. I'm not kidding. That's what they're listed as. So here we go. That's not even in there. <laughs> I'm going to That is 23 use. to hit. Hits. Okay. You take 50,000 points of fire damage. And become a fire elemental. 14 points of fire damage. And you are now on fire. You are on fire. <laughs> He's on fire. Uh, the second attack is a 18 to hit. So I'm guessing that one misses. That one does. Right, so he comes in. <laughs> there is dragon. It goes you on fire. And you you literally singing. watch Balasar ignite. His entire form begins to flicker, and the scales begin to curl, that and the hair begins to just fire. burn it away. The second <laughs> misses. Um, yeah, so you're on fire. Um, drop and roll. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, that'll I, I be can, all of their turns, and now them. it is top of the round. Damn, Balasar, you are Fleetfoot, lit. You're up. Can you push um, him back? Well, I had a plan, and then he appeared in front of us. He's on fire! Um, Guys, I like elementals. I rolled a one, huh. I don't. Okay, sure, why not? Let's like do uh, third level dissonant whispers at the earth elemental right in front of us. It's a wisdom save. Eighteen. You wrote a natural one. Hot damn. Hot diggity. That's five d six. Six seven eight twelve fourteen points of psychic damage, and it has to use its reaction to move away from us, which would get it well. And it turns and back into the wall. Oh, really? Um, now I see Balasar on fire. Yeah, you do. It uses a reaction to move away? Can you... Can you... Yeah, it uses okay. its reaction. It forces it to okay. react and then move away. Even if it did a dash? Hmm? A okay. dash just is just... It uses its okay. action to move. It still has the reaction. Um, mm, I'm going to double my movement. Okay, because you didn't move last turn. 30, 35, 40, 50. Is that a mechanic I don't know about or a magical item mechanic? It's that a is uh, to box. Feline. Feline. Oh, I was like, what? Yeah. How do you do that? <laughs> if I have a stays put, I get double move. And if I don't move next turn, I can do it again. <laughs> what? It's like, the fuck? Um, did I, yeah, would I have seen the other earth elemental go into the wall? At sweet. your vantage point? No. no. So I only know the one that popped out yeah. in front of us. Okay, then that's gonna... 
I'm gonna move back up against that wall because I don't know where he went. Wait a minute. Have to go with the... Do you know that? Okay. Um. No. Okay. Bye. And we the... win D and D because we made D &D the DM left. left. <laughs> he left. I snap my fingers together and uh, I will Tiamat away. No. Game over. We win. Yeah. Good job. New campaign time, guys. All right, cool. We might run late tonight. We're starting the new campaign. Oh, are our characters ready? Sure. Is yours not? No, yeah. it's not. It's just got like a class and a <laughs> some stats in it. <laughs> Backstory's not written, but character's ready to go. Story of my life. <sighs> what, what? And it's one of three possible still. Probably going to be the final. He's bringing in TMI. What are we doing? Oh, I snapped my fingers and will TMI away. Oh, got it. Cool, cool, cool. She and rolled a natural done. 20. Oh, okay. She was undone. Oh, okay, good. She, she no longer exists? Oh, yeah. The the backup DM came in. Oh, got it. Good to know. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> um, I moved against the wall on that. Got it. That's it. Tybron, you're up. Going to hold my action until um, the uh, elemental that I hit that went into the wall comes back. You got it. Uh, okay, you're holding your action? Yep. Balasa, you're up. Um, oh, you take. Uh, where is my D10, guys? Here it is. You take six points of fire damage at the start of your turn because you're on fire. Cool. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to attack the creature in front of me. You do that. Can I? Can I scream? Put 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 yourself out. I would say as your bonus action, you could have screamed, put yourself out. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll do that. Fire's 17. bad. 17 to hit. 17 hits. Fire's bad, bad okay. okay. Whoa. <laughs> we that, were here for a second. That was, that was weird, you guys. Said somebody at a table for a year. You get to know them pretty well in the head. 15 points of damage. 15 points of damage. How much of that is lightning? What are you two doing together when you're off time? <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't ask the question, Greg. Wouldn't, wouldn't don't you ask questions you don't want answers to. Well, you know, we just like play some Call of Duty. Slice through. Played some Fortnite. Yeah, well, yeah you uh, know. 18. 18 will hit. <laughs> Played some fork knife. We go to uh, pottery classes together. Yeah. Painting with the twist. Mm-hmm. The twist is. 18 points. There is no twist. 18 points oh, of damage. Oh, oh. Okay. I was actually going to say that. <laughs> slice into it twice and you watch the flames. <laughs> the twist <laughs> around you. 29. That'll hit as well. Like one of Jack Dawson's French girls from that James Cameron's Titanic. 15, 18 points of damage. Five being Are you saying you draw each other? Paint. 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 Like okay. Yeah. On each body paint. Once you more. Body paint. And on bonus each action to attack. RuPaul is there. You got it. Uh, on TV. Yeah. Well, now you just sound like one of my dreams. There's only 15. <laughs> oh, 15 of us. Does it? 15 I don't know what to be. Oh. These are Touch big sacks of hit, hit points, guys. Oh, I, I'm big well aware. Big sack of HP. They also hit really hard. Yeah. yeah. They're only CR5. 11. Is what Nick said. I'm just parroting. 11? 11. Points of damage? Mm -hmm. All right, good for you. You slice, you just watch Balasar on fire, blades out, one lightning arcing around the edge, and he just fucking goes ham on the cell. Just damn. You see flames and sparks fly across the room as While the other doing it, I'm going to be scooting around him. One of his old ones, yeah. You just kind of walk in a circle no, around it, a whirling yeah. dervish as yeah. you make your way around. I don't think so. <sighs> Still on fire, breathing heavily. I want to emphasize the flame that is licking your body <laughs> around you. Uh, interestingly enough, you do notice that the green scales, as they burn away, there seems to be a flicker of silver beneath. Okay. That is interesting. Next up, shed. Boris. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to move far enough away from wall to be not next to wall so nobody can <laughs> eat me. Uh, so that's like somewhere into the room or something. Like, give me the fuck away from the wall. <laughs> I moved you away from wall. Like, real away. Like, like towards the fire? Somewhere away from the wall. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then I'm going to hold my action to see the earth elemental come out of the... Wall somewhere and Observant. then shoot. Perfect, that makes sense. Okay. You kind of just, both you and Tybron have your, Tybron with the bow at the ready, <laughs> uh, Boris with the weapon, Vera just up and out and about, just eyes gazing. It is now the Earth Elemental's turn. Probably so, not looking this direction, but still. That way? Oh. 
my keen adventurer's mind would think they were coming for us since it looked at yeah. me and then went for me. Yep. So I'm going to... It went in the wall. I'm going to, like, circle the wall. I'm basically looking at... Fleet. Kitty cat. That's a good place to look. Don't move! <laughs> it's uh, you, isn't I, it? Yeah, I'm not, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Fleetfoot, that is a really shitty place to. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yep. Does he get? Did he come out of the wall and move? No, past he me? comes out of the floor. Can I see he him? Out of the damn I thought, yeah. Can I see um, him pop up behind Balasar? You can just because of the fire element that's in front of him, you can make him out. Cool. I'm gonna release two attacks at this guy with um, sharpshooter. All right, go ahead and roll your attacks, Boris. He just busted up right in front of you. What would you like to do? Get my assault at him. Yeah, please. You can. Am I at it? It's encouraged. Uh, a 20 and a 22. Roll for damage because they both hit. So I'm at, am I at disadvantage or not? This so is the part I don't understand. say that in this circumstance... Okay, so you are at the ready looking for them. I would say that you are not at disadvantage because you were prepared for it. Okay. If it had just kind of popped up randomly, then it would have been obviously a... First shot is 24 parts of piercing damage Thank and you. two Thank points you. of cold. So 24 total? Uh, no, 26 total. 26 total? Thank you. Yeah. Math, I'm good at Do it. Do you want just totals? Yes. Okay. The next one... Uh, 29. 29 points of damage. Thank you. As the arrows... Three of which <laughs> is cold. Uh, ring out. 29, you said? Yeah. So 26 and 29. You got it. Nice. The arrows... <laughs> and the ice... <laughs> Balasar, as this earth elemental... <laughs> emerges be uh, behind you. Your, shoot, your shots. Yep. Okay. Number one. Uh, the, the, the sharpshooter. Yep. Uh, oh. 17. Th 30 like minus... That. Five is it? Yeah, minus yeah. five. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five. That'll 25. hit. Yeah. Okay. I have a new toy to use. Me too. Or is it then? You do. It I might kill you. Oh. Is it a spell? It might uh, be. Whoa. Oh my. Uh, 15, oh my. And sixteen. And sixteen. Thirty-one points of damage with the first one. Hot damn. Okay. The first. Man, you're just showing off. Splinters off. I'm using a sharpshooter. You should use it too. No, I did, but I didn't hit 31. You did 29, though, so you're I literally did, you're too right. off. <laughs> <laughs> I can't attack three times, though, like you. Uh, next up. Because you have spells. This is true. Uh, oh, Boris shit. has one spell. So that is a misfire. And Vera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this massive entity in front of you, Vera. Your trusty weapon. <laughs> And that means you can use. I have to reload with my next shot. Yep. No, I have to fix it with my next shot. Yep. How do I do that? You will roll a dexterity check with your Oops. proficiency bonus because of your tinkerer's tools. Okay, so uh, something dex based, acrobatics, got it. Twenty. Uh, you as it, you look at it. Stare up very quickly at the earth elemental and just yeah, and kind of hunker down and are able to fix it momentarily and then comes back into play. Uh, you notice that there is some mild uh, metal scoring at the edge, but nothing that's going to permanently affect the the weapon itself. Just a minor cosmetic thing that you can buff out. But you were able to get it fixed very quickly. Okay, so I did thirty one points and then I went shit. Fix fix fix. Next. Okay, so the attacks are as follows. Earth Elemental, two slam attacks at Balasar at advantage because it's flanking you. Uh, that's a 26 to hit for the first one. Hits. Uh, where are my D8s? I can't even anyway. block that. That is 15 plus 5 for 20 points of bludgeoning damage for the first hit. The second hit is a 20 to hit. Uh, misses. Misses. So the first slam. <coughs> you see the plate armor <coughs> dent in a bit. The second <coughs> next to your form. While the fire element. Oh, and then that Boris, because the fire element goes afterwards. Two attacks at you, Boris. Wait. Oh. I'm like, what? The fire element? They're not. Yeah, no, no, the earth element. 16 plus 8 for 24 to hit. Of course. Uh, dealing 11 points of bludgeoning damage as it <coughs> slams into your form. The oh, next is a 18 to hit. Uh, that misses. Oh, shit. Okay. As it <laughs> slams next to you on the other side. <clears throat> Earth 
and just gravel spraying everywhere as stone splinters across you. I uh, definitely dodge. Fire Elemental is going to make its two touch attacks at you, Balasar. Uh, 14 plus 6 is a 20 to hit, so that misses. Misses. 22. 16 plus 6 is 22, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. 22. Hits. You take 10 points of fire damage, and you remain similarly on fire. I'm still on fire. <coughs> this Does it miss guy is the on fire. No. The bullet, in this case, the bullet is locked in the chamber, so you do not, this you're able to clear it out. Is on fire. Get over to the um, they actually still have a little bit of movement left because I planned it that way, and they are going to <laughs> back into the ground below you. If you'd like to use reactions, uh, Boris would be the one who could. Balasart's behind you. So I'd allow you to take a reaction to attack with disadvantage if you wanted to. Okay. Mine as well. I'm getting a disadvantage attack. They're on the ground right here. So this is a attack of opportunity. Yep. Attack You're of saying just Balasar's with disadvantage, disadvantage, not you. Balasar's back is to it. Yours is still just straight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. All right, I'm taking however I can. So. Yay. Can I dead eye it? I'll allow it, yes. Good. Excellent. Twenty uh, two? Yeah, twenty two. Twenty two will hit. I don't I did use that inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Can I just use my reaction to cast frostbite at it? If you'd like. Mm, that's what I want to do. All right, what is the save? 16, con save. 16 con, so 9 plus a shit load. Misses it by 1, 15. I have 16 points of cold damage. As it <laughs> arcs over you, watches the frost, and it <laughs> melds with the stone floor below you. Uh, how much damage was from you, my friend Boris? Uh, 17. 17 points of damage. You got it. Okay. Uh, they all disappear. The fire elemental remains standing just beside you. Um, the first time it enters a hostile, enters a creature space on the turn that the creature takes. They're just in the ground, right? That's what that means. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would have actually taken an additional 1d10, Balsar, but I will I will say that I missed that, so that's a-okay. Um, top of the round, Fleetfoot, you're up. <clears throat> 25 back enough away even though I know they can go into the floor um, and I'm going to launch three Eldritch Blasts at our fire buddy. you got to um, roll to hit for all three please be a 17 that'll hit a 23 that'll hit and a 28 that'll uh, they will all hit roll for damage 3d10 13 plus 9... 22. 22 points. 22 points of damage in total? Yep. All right. As that... You... The, the purple and black uh, force energy as it... You see the flames begin to dim. It's looking pretty rough as it... Um, barely able to hold its form. And I'm going to look at Balasar and use my bonus action to inspire him and say, Stop, drop, and roll. You have 1d10 inspiration. And should stop, drop, and roll. You are in mood tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Your don't die. not stop nearly as trivial as normal. <laughs> Just uh, don't want to fight these guys. <laughs> Next up, Tyberon. <laughs> Why really not? This is fun. <laughs> um, seeing that the other two went away, but he's in front of Balasar, I'll shoot two arrows at the fire elemental. You got it. So I would say give me sure their hits individually action. first, okay. and then we can see. Oh, you can't see them anyway, but yeah. First one was sharpshooter. Yep. Can you beat a 13? 15? Yeah, that hits. Um, that's 11, 18, 28, uh, 32. 32. With that, the arrow, the ice arcs throughout its form, and it falls to ash on the floor. Balasar, you're still on fire. 
Sorry, buddy. It's okay. You, you and Plague, um, my friend. And that dented plate on your back is hurting your shoulder really badly. Uh, I guess I will stay where I'm at because I don't, I can't hold the second part of the attack action. Nope. So it's just kind of. Yep. Yep. Done, you have the so. second arrow knocked, and you just kind of release it. Not. Not. Well, I'll just I'll just hold targets, it. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Okay. All right. Next up, are you gonna move, Tyrone? Are you good? No, I'll stay where I'm at, and I'll say, put yourself out. Balasar, you're up. At the top of your turn, you take six points of fire damage. Somebody should tell him. It's two of us that have told him. Um, the They're not around. I can't see them. Nope. But I'll use my action to stop, trap, and roll. You put yourself Thank out. You. you see Balasar <laughs> throw himself on the ground and roll around a little like bit. Just click. You, so you knock yourself oh. prone, put your fire out. Will you get back up? Yeah. You get back up because, ha, ha, ha. Looking, you see now on the right side, you're starting to see the green scales fall away to platinum beneath them. Anything else you'd like to do? Um. <clears throat> Have your movement stand back up. <laughs> Just thinking out loud here. No, I think I'm, I'm good. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, Boris, you're I up. Hear you stand back. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so not much I can do other than wait and see if the guy comes back from him. What direction? And go three shots with pistol at that point. You got it. Are you going to... Um, he's not dead. Cause he's the dead. one that you've hexed, right? Yes. You, you, that's the intention? Okay, yep. got it. Perfect. All right, it is now their turn. So... Oh no, flee. <laughs> it is me. <laughs> if I just I wish I couldn't it, hear him and he just appeared and you're just like <laughs> erupt, erupt behind. So this one that you have hexed, would you like to make your shots? Yes. Alright, go right ahead. Should I stand? Do you want Do I need to move? Uh sharpshooter and uh the the blah blah blah. Dead eye? Not dead eye, the dazing. Dazing, got it, thank you. Con save, right? I think so. Uh, it failed. Did I con save? With a 14. So it has disadvantage on its attacks. Dazing. Uh, con save. DC 18 or suffer disadvantage on attacks till the end of its next it turn. It failed. Hey. Okay, so 15, 20 something minus 5. 28 minus 5 is 23 to hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Damage, please. Money, please. Uh. 10, that can't be right, really? Was it sharpshooter? Sharpshooter's plus 10, 16, yeah. so... 26? 26, yeah. Shit. All right. You fire. You see the bullet curve around you, fleet foot, and it kind of slams into the stone behind you as you're like, huh, as this massive elemental is sprung up behind your body. I will never get used to that. I'm not asking you to. Misfires. In the left hand. Fuck! Sorry, I distracted you. And I can't switch guns or anything, right? Nope. Nope. And then it's good. I have to use a bonus action to... Fix? Fix. All right. So make a tinkering check. Plus dex, plus proficiency. Uh, 27. With haste, you're able to clear out the barrels and take the bullet. This, this is the second time this bullet has jammed. You tuck it away in your pouch so it won't do it again. And just gonna... It was a different gun, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, Fuck this! Uh, and that'll be your reaction? Yep. All right, you well, got uh, Is that my reaction or my action that I held until I saw him? That was the action that you held. So when you hold your action, that action becomes the reaction to when the trigger happens. Okay. Right, so you're just choosing to use your action as a reaction. Okay, did not know that. Yep. Good enough for moving forward. Okay, yep. so... Uh, two attacks on Balasar, two attacks on Fleetfoot. We'll do Balasar first. Don't That's worry, a he's at disadvantage. So because I shot him in the ding ding. The next is a. <laughs> ding ding. Is that what you call? 22. His foot, yes, it's, the ding ding. It's, okay. <laughs> I, I roll 7 and 8 whenever it's D8s with you, Balasar, and I'm very sorry. So that is 20 points of bludgeoning damage as the second slam attack <laughs> slams into your back. The first one poof, misses you, dodge. The second one just kind of hits you in the side. Uh, Fleetfoot, it's a disadvantage with you, right? 
that is an 8 and an 18, so an 8 plus 8 for 16 to hit. That misses. Two nines, so 17. Oh, my AC is 18. Fuck. Thanks, studded leather armor. Kind of You're the 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 fluttering just... <laughs> you were able to dodge out of the way as it kind of wobbles and slams twice into the ground I beside you. I want to use my wild magic, but okay. Yeah, I mean, you can. It's just anytime it somebody to makes it. It has Ooh. to hit. Oh, does it have to hit? Yeah, yeah it has to hit. I should, remember the, I should remember the items I make for you. Um, <laughs> it has to connect. That's what I was looking for. Well, you made it for Leaf, and he's dead, so. Yeah. Top the round, anyway. Uh, um, <laughs> my transformation. Fleetfoot, you are up, my friend. Um, the elemental behind you. I'll spin around and uh, attack it with my rapier. You got it. Oops. That's going to be a 19. That'll hit. Perfect. Uh, how much? How many uh, charges of bardic inspiration have you used? Two. Gotcha. Uh, what do you use? Five, six, seven. So that's eight points Kay. plus psychic blades, obviously. Okay. So <coughs> five more d6. Ooh, I see a couple. 12, 18, 19 more points. Nine, so plus what? 19, uh, plus, 19 plus 8, so 27 points. You turn around, take your rapier, and <laughs> stab it into the side, and you watch <laughs> cracks that begin to appear. All of a sudden, these strange hypnotic blades of psychic energy appear around you and <laughs> stab into the elemental, and it <laughs> crumbles to dust. Nice. <coughs> Bubby, your turn. Um... So I know the fire he came out behind me and this is the only one. Um I'm gonna use my movements. It's the wrong way. <laughs> to move back and away from that one. You got it. But Ty they missed you already. They were right next to you and <laughs> not hit at all. Um Tyber, si you're up. Same thing. Seeing Fleet run, I can see the one behind Balasar. Fleet duck! <clears throat> Two shots with sharpshooter. Oh cat! You chuckle and lose two arrows. <laughs> <coughs> uh, Sharpshooter at the one behind Balasar. You got it. Not uh, everybody uh, can pull that cat. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, these I actually probably miss. Um, 13 <laughs> and in 11. Both of those do oh, unfortunately too, miss. I see. Yep. <laughs> As Fleetfoot's shout was actually a distraction, and you kind of a duck, and both of the arrows fly off to the corner of the, uh, the room. <coughs> Sorry. That's okay. I stay where I'm at. You look pointedly at Fleetfoot. <laughs> oh, cat! <laughs> uh, Balasar, you're up, my friend. Uh, turn and attack. You got it. Does it feel better to do this with your fighter than with the ranger? Yes, <laughs> it really does. What's wrong with rangers? Well, he was the melee ranger. He's a melee ranger. Oh, he's he like a the... power ranger. Oh, that's awful. Uh, Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen to hit. Yeah. That misses, unfortunately. As it it scatters off the side. Uh, 23. That'll hit. Yeah, roll for damage. Huh? What did he. What was your weapon? Two long swords. He only uses long swords. Hmm. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Can't wait till he rolls a cleric. No, I'm using a hammer for that one. Yeah, I figured as much as bludgeoning weapons. No yeah. martial weapons. Uh, what was I, your actually, damage? I could use a long sword with yeah, that character. Could. He's proficient. God I looked damn, at fuck it. Him. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you chose the elf. Okay, anyway, it's our next campaign problems. Uh, <laughs> what was the damage? Uh, 15 points of damage. 15 points of damage. As you strike it, you watch the crack begin to create a fissure in this entity's form. It's looking really rough. Uh, that's 24. That'll hit. Roll for damage. <clears throat> my clockwork. You just like... He's got to have my gummies. 17. 17 points of damage? How do you want to end him? Uh, I want to chop his head off. You see the fissure begin to crack, and you notice that there's a strange crack that's like <laughs> right by where the head would be of this boulder elemental that just sits in front of you. And as you look, you turn your blade, lightning <laughs> on the side, and you <laughs> stab into the fissure and watch it. <laughs> the head shatters <laughs> and falls away as it falls over dead. Cool, so that was fun. Cool. See, I told See? you, always fun yeah. at end of... So. Let's go ahead and get the treasure from here. This looks like good room to camp. 
As you look around, you see these strange stalactite and stalagmite walls fall away with a hiss, and you find yourself standing in a tiled room of black walls. Stone seems to have been cut from hard granite. When have you ever seen anything like this in your life before? There is one doorway to your um, left that leads to, (coughs) pardon me, to your right, my apologies, that leads down a long hallway into another room at this point. It's difficult to see much, um, but that is what you see at this point. It's fairly dark in this vicinity. Well, this looked like a good room to camp, but now I'm not so sure. We're in a magic tower. I don't think there's anywhere good to camp. Of course there is. You can sleep anywhere. Well, we have the elevator. We could always I'm going to go back. check out the door. Uh, it is an actually, uh, the door is open. Okay. Proceeds down a long hallway. As you glance down the hallway, give me a perception check. <clears throat> 15. 15. Immediately to your left, you see another small, narrow um, passageway that has a door that you can see about five feet away. Uh, the and bloody then, footprints gone too? Uh, at this point, they kind of span and continue. Uh, they do not go down this hallway, okay. strangely enough. But they do progress down the other hallway, and you see there's a, a flight of stairs that goes up about 30 feet can I go and disappears into the darkness. Check on that small little door. Absolutely. You move up to the door, and you kind of... <laughs> seems locked. Balasar. Balasar, you want to try this door? Sure. You're good at doors now. <clears throat> Apparently. Always have been. I'm good at doors. The English language is a, is a wondrous thing. Did anybody yeah. check the room <clears throat> out? Like, did we investigate the room? You can if you okay. wish. Eleven. There's broken tables and sitting areas and a great deal of blood splattered around the room. Is the televator still back there? It is. Where we have no eye. That is the DC you needed. It's, it seems that this lock has been tampered with previously, now that you go down and inspect it, as if somebody attempted to enter and was unsuccessful, leaving part of the mechanism actually unlocked, and you're able to jimmy the pick around and kind of... And the door... opens. Um, looking inside, you recognize what this room is intended for immediately. This is a workroom. And as you look at the strange instruments around in the vicinity, it's very clearly a wizard's workroom. Work tables span the room that is about 40 feet by 30 feet at a strange uh, diagonal expanse, almost like a, a trapezoid in strange, strange shape. There are four work tables with notes scattered across them. Flasks, beakers, and all sitting on braziers throughout the entire... Th- looks as if it's... Still in operation. As Is there anything cool lying to... around, like items or? Um, strangely, what you see trapped in the center of the room, look by almost like an arcane shield, looks to be a writhing bit of wind that is just seemingly trapped by this arcane, arcane dome that is. It's a ray shield. Whizzing and. I'm not going in there sitting in the center of the room. Does it look like the the wind is adamant? It looks angry. If you could see angry wind, it looks like a tempest. Do I know what it is? You can give me an intelligence check. Fleetfoot, are you witnessing this? So... Balasar, you recognize what's in there immediately as it once threw you across a snowy expanse. Oh. If I can glance in the room... You know it is wind, but you are not sure how it is captured in that way. I mean, in seeing that Do nobody I has exploded. how it's captured? Arcana check, please. And seeing that nothing would explode or blow up. Because, Balasar, you went in the room? Yeah, nine. I did. You didn't? I'll <laughs> follow in and carefully. Arcana check. Um, and because of your time as a wizard, I'll say do it with advantage. Uh, it's trapped. You know it's trapped by magic. Fifteen. Not sure what okay. else is there. Is there anything else in the, the room that looks interesting? Um, you notice that there are a number of gems housed within the whirlwind itself. Uh, looking at them, you see that there are eight, two of each elemental variety. In the wind? In the wind itself. 
I rolled a 15, by the way. Uh, you would notice this as well. Um, as you see Balathar kind of look into the elemental uh, whirling wind behind this strange, almost electric, arcane shield prison, really, holding this elemental uh, fleet foot, as you look around, you see various regents and components, some of which have long dried up and decayed, that are seemingly useless th at this point. Um, the notes that are written here are... You're familiar with Dathana's note writing uh, <clears throat> and her approach to wizardry. This seems absolutely insane. Uh, and it's <coughs> difficult to decipher exactly what is written here, but you can tell that there are two things that stick out to you. And it looks as if it is attempting to create a new school of magic. You're not sure what, but as you kind of continue to expand the notes, you find the same sort of symbol as you were staring at the sundial that deals with the change of time. But that's just one of the many different types of experiments that you are able to, that's the only one that you recognize. There are at least four others. Can I tiptoe up behind them and just kind of very loudly all of a sudden, huh, that looks absolutely insane. The symbol keeps coming up. What's the symbol? You want to uh, grab some of that for Dathana? Maybe she can tell us what about is, it. What I is mean, it? Not do? really. It's nonsense. He's trying to create a new school of magic. Right. That's the whole purpose the of the tower. Right. But it's I. The symbol we might need to know. But what's the symbol? You recognize it from the elvish symbol that you noticed previously. Okay. And when it deals with cost, you see the same reference to. Uh, uh, there are the same sort of delineations of the rune that you saw in Elvish that deal with time. Okay. So for me, it looks like an Elvish rune for time. Mm -hmm. okay. At least there's similarities to it. Okay. Should we hop back on this uh, teleportation thingy? Well, let's uh, see I if mean, there's anywhere else down this hallway we might be able to rest for a second. There's nothing else in the room worth, like, I don't see any potions or... Wands or that arcana check? No. no. I mean, the Tempest has stones, <laughs> but it, we would have to. I'm not messing with that thing to get the stones. Take that thing threw me across it. Mm. That one? Not what? that one. Oh. You remember what this from the from the Sea of Moving Ice? Oh yeah. As Ballas right. mentions this, this that memory oh. comes careening back. Yeah, you. it's stuck in there now, but I'm not going in there. <laughs> Why not? Boris, don't touch it, please. You don't want to mess with it. It might throw you back up to the surface. Oh, so quick traveling. <laughs> not comfortable. Oh, not, not good. Let's keep going. Um, once everybody walks out, I will walk back to the desk and to a, two or three. Like, I'm not going to take all the writings, but... Is there a way to lock it on our way out? There is. You can certainly attempt to. It'd be a sleight of hand check again. No, like, not like on the other side of the door, like a. Oh, you want to, like, as we close the door. You, what's your passive? Yeah, with your passive investigation, you'd be able to see the easy mechanism to kind of get it locked. Uh, so I would say add to your inventory, Zonthal's notes, three pages, and then a question mark. X O N T H A L Zonthal. You all make your way out of his laboratory, closing the door, Balasar locking the room behind you, and find yourself once again in the hallway looking to ascend. You all continue? Sure. So the steps so, that ascend into the walkway appear to... Wait a minute. If we're actually going to continue, I'm going to use second wind. You got it. Second wind. As you take the left-hand turn and ascend the stairs, immediately what you notice is as soon as the last individual... By the way, what is the marching order here? Not first. I'll go first. Balasar's first. I can do second. Boris second. Tyburn third, Fleetfoot last. Fleetfoot, as soon as your foot touches the stairway, all behind you falls away. And you find yourself floating adrift in what seems to be a astral expanse. Looking down below you at the stairway, it is still the same, about six feet across. Stone stairs leading up. Thousands of stars twinkle and sparkle around you in every direction, above, below, and to your sides. 
Should have taken the elevator. This guy's yeah, fucking crazy. The These are unfamiliar constellations, the likes of which you have never seen before, even after setting the night sky all across the Sword Coast. We are not where we used to be. Meteors streak across the vastness of this expanse, just out of reach. Or maybe we are just where we are, but in a different time. Just past the top of the stairs, you all notice a door framed by nothingness rising from the path. It takes it to the twilight zone. I think we're someplace else. I think we should try to go back. Then 50 feet beyond that, the path continues straight ahead. So the door will be on the right. You kind of just see the side of the frame extending into nothingness, and then the path continuing on ahead. Lead the way. Which which way do you guys want to go? You're in front. Oh, shit. (laughs) I'll go through the first doorway then. So you make your way up to the first door. (laughs) Um, As you approach the first door and reach out to open it, I need you to make, I need all of you actually, to make a dexterity saving throw. Twenty? Twenty. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Do I need to indomitable that? You don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to luck point that, though. Eighteen. <laughs> Eighteen, thank you. <laughs> Eleven. You, it was. You just make the save. Ooh. Ooh. As you all see careening towards you in unison, a number of these meteors as you approach the door begin streaking towards your form. All of you, as they begin moving towards you, you're able to notice and shout to one another to dodge, and you're able to be able to move. And no f- cat! F- no, f- the f- other f- duck! Dive. Dive. Dodge. Jump! <laughs> as these 14 <laughs> meteors <laughs> fly around you, no, dodge out of the way, and Ballast are able to uh, and the door opens, and all sorry. at once, you find yourself Transported and standing in the room. In the room? In the room that he opened the door to. Oh, okay. What What do we see? It's in this room. So it is a circular room that looks to be very much a library or a study. Shelves range the entirety of the side of the wall. Oh, hey, Um, look, both your friend. That is about gently domed, about 20 feet above. Uh, There is a wheeled ladder connected to a rail that extends across the entirety of the bookshelves across the uh, library. Which allows access to the upper shelves on these nice pine bookshelves. There's a delicate but ornate desk that sits at the center of this room, um, surrounded by piles of what look to be blank paper. A large map sits on the desk with four stones that are jammed into the sides, pinning it to the desk. What's on the map? Uh, Walking to the... I'm talking to books. You talk. You just going. You literally, and... Boris is talking about seeing if there one talks back to him or one has an interesting title or something like oh, that. Man, what kind of books? All kinds, or are they? Make an investigation check. What? what? If you're just going to talk to them, do you talking to wanna... books, looking for interesting titles. Oh yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> investigation check as well. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Nineteen. Fourteen. <laughs> As you all begin looking through the books, there are a number of spell books in the area. Um, as you begin looking through both Boris and Fleet, but you find the very similar book with a large blue binding at the back that is written in strange filigree. The book looked just wildly interesting for you, Fleet. But you're like, oh, that's a tome. That's a spell book. And as you reach for it, both of you, your hands connect, and there's this <laughs> pull, and there's a... See? Whose hand was on it first? Stuff. This is why I always look for the books. I had this one that taps to tell, tell stuff, and then this one opens doors. The map is a map of Faerun, with strange white lines moving throughout the entirety of the expanse. Oh. White lines just seem to be tracing running east and west across the map. Are there white lines on that one that I can't see because Nick is in the way? Or there are none. No. Okay. They look to have been added there by a master cartographer or magician. Who's so to what say? opened? The bookshelves <laughs> opened behind you, leading to another room. Well, I'm going in. We've come this far. You didn't want to come. I should go first. My hand was on the book first. You didn't can I even take, want to I come here. Can I take the map with me? Well, now I'm invested, aren't I? Make then you can check. see over my head. I can't see over yours. Well, you can get on my shoulders. I walk forward. Oh. Six. Oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> just won't move. Okay. Come on. I would say, Fleetfoot, on your way through, you would know that these 
the library itself is wildly valuable, but looking at all the books, they would weigh more than a ton if you attempted to bring them. You would estimate that they're worth is about 50,000 gold if you were able to get all of these out. They'd be very difficult to carry, though. But there's no, like, I, what I was looking for was, like, a spell book or... I am looking for some form of artifact book, though. Like, just to take with me as a souvenir. Divination, if you want, specifically. If he was studying all kinds of magic. <clears throat> Can I look f- through the shelves for a book of exalted deeds or vile darkness? Investigation check, please. Let's see if I find one. So for you, Fleetfoot, as you, with your investigation roll, as you search through looking for 19. a book... 19. 19, thank you. As you look through for a book specifically on what now? Like divination magic. Just you do magic. find a book on divination that is called The All-Seeing Eye. It is a voluminous purple tome that looks to be fairly expansive. As you flip through, you're able to, just at first glance, find the <coughs> notes on the study of divination, the inaccuracies of some of the divination practices as you continue to grow in power, and then the ability to, of course, affect the future through divination magics. Any notes written in it, or is it just a... It is an expansive study on divination, and there, at this glance, it would take you a while to sit and study for footnotes like that, but I'm first... You can if you wish. Boris, your investigation check was... 19. 19. Looking through, you are able... Relic Hunter, so... Yes. You are able to find specifically a book on the fabled City of Brass from the Elemental Plane of Fire. Mm. As you pull the book, Tybron, I, you, I imagine you're kind of trying to jimmy-rig the stones. As Boris pulls the book off the shelf, you witness the <coughs> map itself shift and change. What's it change to? A map of the Plain of Fire. With Listen. the city of brass seated in the very center, and lines pointing to it all moving from directions into the city of brass. The book itself details a number of the, uh, just a kind of casual flipping through, details a number of the locations found within the City of Brass where one might search for artifacts, assuming you're able to make it, A, through the Plane of Fire, and B, to find through the eternal desert of the Scorching Sun to the City of Brass itself. It also does detail the location of the City of Brass, and that's just at first glance through what you'd have with that roll. Coming with me. You got it. Look, I found you, friend. Did this map just changed? We're oh, walking. even We're better! Walking. And now I have cartographer <coughs> skill. I'm going to copy map. Of. <laughs> we know what Boris is doing. <laughs> uh, what you do find looking That's through... amazing! I have book about that city right here. <laughs> well, it was just a map of Farron. <laughs> I'm walking forward. It changed. Okay. You, you turned around and went back? Yes, of course. There's a map of the City of Brass that has this, and I'm going to the City of Brass after this. Okay. I'm not going with him. I'm going down the hallway. So as they leave, Balazar, you find yourself searching the searching the, the, the tomes on the shelves. And as the three as three of your companions, Boris just finishing engrossed in making a map of the city of brass on the elemental plane of fire, you hear <laughs> And looking to your right you see a paper raven sit and it lands on your shoulder and the head kind of and as it looks it tilts its head like in a strange origami way and flies off into the corner do you follow? I do as it moves you hear We're about as to. three more appear behind it and it continues around you all landing on your shoulders and arms and as you do you kind of feel them peck on the armor just tapping. And you find yourself drawn to a specific section. There is a gap where the pine bookshelves make way to a dark oak leading to mahogany. It seems as if the wood itself has been grown and integrated together. And you see a black bound book with gold filigree on the sides. And on the edge in a circular uh, motif you notice a son with a theater face smiling on the side. And what'd you like to do? Uh, it's generally I'd like to reach out and take the book. So you pick it up, and as you do, the birds <laughs> crumple into paper and <laughs> turn to ash on the ground. And as you look at it, at first the language shifts from ancient runes, 
You don't understand what they read, but after staring at it for a moment, you see it a tone of leadership and influence. I'm going to take that and put it away. <clears throat> Into the bag of holding. I mean, everyone's playing with books. Can I play with a book now? You can make an investigation <laughs> check if you like. <laughs> What are, you, what are you looking for specifically? Something about dexterity? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Something about dexterity? Ask the paper ravens. Yeah. I rolled a 13. A 13? I'm just looking for books now, I guess. Everyone's <laughs> like, okay. You look through and you find a couple of tomes on the the finer points of archery. Uh, sure. I mean, they exist. You you see one specifically of uh, Bodrick, uh, who is an archer, who a, a famous ranger from the year 1127, who... <laughs> A little light reading. Yeah, if you'd like just to take it, you, you, I'm just gonna take you. you everybody else is taking your books. So you just kind of reach out and take the yellow bound tome and just. I'm gonna take that too. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go find Flea. I don't. <laughs> Everyone's got books, so you grabbed a book, right? So you can go ahead and add that Some, to your inventory, oh. balance, or if you'd like. Whew, okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> if you. If, it is, I had to roll so high on my table to make that happen. I love it. It, it was... <laughs> <laughs> you know it takes a week of reading to do that, right? Yeah. Okay. Just as an FYI. Do you even know how to read? Mm-hmm. Consecutively, like, He's you can't break it up he... over the course of a month. You have to do it in a week. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okie dokie. You should spend 48 hours over a period of six days or fewer. Yep. So you have so. six days to read for 48 hours. Oh, yeah. yeah. You will not be resting for all those One six days. One third of the time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. long rests are going to be hard to come by. But you're going to talk worth good. It, worth it for the friend winks, my man. <laughs> Guys, it's going to bring my charisma from negative two to negative one. <laughs> two points or one? I literally just like, don't all of your spare spells work off of charisma? Yeah. Okay. I'm down the hallway. I... So, Val, sorry, as, the as the birds turn to ash, the book pocketed, you turn and see that the stack of blank pages beside the desk has lessened considerably, and you make your way into this room. It is ten feet higher. All of a sudden, as the ceiling arches from the room that you've just exited, a circular pane of crystal, ten feet in diameter, hangs vertically in the chamber from the ceiling. It is anchored by chains from the ceiling and the walls in four different points. <coughs> A scene of rolling fire can be glimpsed by glancing at the crystal from time to time. In the front, there is an ornate rod that has been set into the floor directly into what looks to be a gold base. The rod itself, four feet in height, topped by a glittering topaz. That looks expensive. I want it. Let's, let's take it. Well, obviously. So should I grab it or? Yes. You want me to grab it? I mean, I can grab it. We'll go grab it then. Can you tell what it is first? Maybe we should check. I can't. Let's check it, it for traps, though. An it's investigation check. Did you like. have that wand of identify? It's totally fine. Fine. <laughs> uh, it's really pretty, and it is just from looking at it. That shit is set you, into the floor. The I have the ritual. Oh, I um, think the wand works. is detect. Oh, okay. Can I identify? If you'd like. You yeah. can certainly try. I'd like to try. Are you going to do that as a ritual? Watch my back. Yes. So that is 11 minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for 11 minutes, you see Fleetfoot drop down, open up his spell book, and begin to perform You the complained spell. about me, watch map? Shh. <laughs> I wasn't complaining. Make a arcana check with advantage. Uh, while he is doing this, what the rest are you doing? I'm watching his back. You got it? I'm 16. arguing with him about the definition of complaining, and it's going to come down to when you open your mouth, it's complain. 16. <laughs> That's what it comes down to? <laughs> got it. From what you're able to glean, this is a... So what to do already? This is a scrying crystal, and it is set and attuned to this location. Currently, the scrying crystal is... I shouldn't say attuned to this location. The scrying crystal is set and bound to Xanthal's tower. That is what you're able to pick up immediately. It, the scrying crystal itself is attuned to look 
at the elemental plane of fire. Specifically, as you reach out and pass your hand over it, all of a sudden, looking at the glass plane, the crystal pane in front of you, you see a glimpse of the roiling domed top, colored in brass, of the city of brass. The f- raging red fires and enhanced oranges and yellows behind it, filling your field of vision across the crystal. All of you, as Fleet Force passes his hand over it, you see this change in vision over the crystal. Yes, I have Hitchhiker's Guide to that city. It is a strange but fiery vista located just at an overlook looking at the city itself. Why is the city of Brass so important? It is a cool place. I have not been there yet. I plan on going. Well, this is the third time we've seen it referenced in the last five minutes. Why was Anthos so infatuated with it? He is mage. It's a very powerful area. And if he's trying to create a new school of magic... Might as well start. That is similar to asking you are a ranger why you like forest. Why do you like the forest? It's quiet. <laughs> I, and he, Xanthal, would probably not say the same thing about it being quiet, but super magical. Okay. Uh, also, should we take it? Can we? You would know through that identify spell that it would take force. It would take massive force to remove. And Didn't you say tied the to effect of not location? of doing this unsuccessfully, you do not know the effect it would have on the person who attempted to remove it, but you know it is a permanent impact. Palisar. So, yeah. yes, we should take it then, obviously. It's real tough to move, and some bad things might happen if you fail. We don't need it, but it's pretty. Well, we don't need it. We'll, we'll try it on the way back, maybe. Probably bad things happen even if you succeed, though. Maybe we should just leave it here and keep looking for this dragon. Why are they here? Are they here to it's try like to steal the magic? one time when I took Idol off pedestal and then I had to run away from rock. Cube. Big cube rock. <laughs> Very slow moving. I say we leave it for now just so we don't have to run away from rock. Is there another way out of here, Alan? Yes. <laughs> I go to the next path out. <laughs> You walk out the door and you notice that during the time in which you had been in there, there has been books that have kind of fallen away. And there is, <clears throat> as you walk back into the circular room, you all entered, right, looked at the study. On the right side, this was the opening door into this room. As you exit Tyron, looking to your right and left, to the, your left you see the door where you entered, leading back, leading back to what is the astral staircase and hallway. Mm-hmm. To the right, directly in front of you, to the opposite side on the circular room, you notice that another doorway has opened. And there seems to be kind of falling paper and pages from books that seem to be, as it opened almost unexpectedly. Um, Those of you who are are more observant members would know that this was right around when Fleetfoot began casting his spells. Doesn't look like it liked us being here. So the books are like tearing themselves up? It looks as if the doorway was opened unexpectedly and the books are then falling through. Torn asunder. Oh. Yes. Torn asunder. Can I go? So somebody went that way. Unless one of you opened that. I didn't. It wasn't me. Let's, let's follow it. Carefully. Yeah. Okay. Um, you walk through. This is a large room with a simple desk. So basically, and... once we get them started a long adventure, they want to go. But getting them started, they don't want to do. Yeah. You got it. We're off. Let me set the scene for you. <laughs> just lots of this. Tyron, Tyron and Fleetfoot look at each other, have a very quiet conversation, and then just head off into the room. Balasar and Boris look at one another, which I imagine is the seven fucking foot <laughs> dragonborn, three and a half foot dwarf. They look at each other. Boris, all the fucking time? Balasar, nod. <laughs> <laughs> and like we twins. follow. <laughs> Trying to get them started, can't get them started. But once get them started, they just go and don't look for everything. Look over got them. The yeah. sooner we get over this, the sooner we're back to peace. I was quiet. not talking to you. I was talking about <laughs> you, not not in conversation. <laughs> I turn around and shoot him. You. <laughs> you both turn around. Just. <laughs> uh, this room, Fleetfoot, is of exquisite interest to you. It is filled. You recognize it immediately as what would be a study for writing spell books. Mm. Looking about, you see that there are a number of magically enchanted How pages dare we stop that are our glass floor. wildly, wildly thickly packed, meaning you could likely write three of Dathana's spell books with the paper that you have here, 
and there are at least eight wells of magically enchanted ink that you would understand is very difficult to come by. And I'd love to take all of them. You can if you wish. Will they all fit in my pocket of holding? You will be getting very close to full. I was going to say, I'm getting close. Um, I got some room. I was going to say, let me take, like... Keep... You also find a couple of quill pins Let's that are exquisitely all. fashioned, to your room. beautifully feathered, and seem to be there. in working order if you'd like to take the quills as well. Absolutely. All right. So you can add those to your inventory if you wish. So that is 300 pages of vellium paper, which would be magically enchanted wizard paper for those of you who are interested in wizards, um, as well as enchanted ink for vials, or for inkwells of enchanted ink, which will, by the way, each of the inkwells will cover about 150, or not 150, about 75 pages. I would like to search the room for another interesting gadgets because this is yes. a mage tower. He's taking stuff. Can I just look too? Investigation check, investigation like, check. Balser, you're kind of standing at the doorway like magic shit. You said three. Well, they're sheets. looking. I'll look around. All right, investigation check. 16. <laughs> 16? What was that? It's a 20. Natural 20? Uh, and Balser? 20. 20. Not natural? Not natural. Dirty 20. Uh, Boris, as you begin pouring through the room, you find that this room is dedicated to writing um, spell books, but as you kind of look through the pages, you... What is that? You notice a very peculiar looking black stone that has kind of fallen from the side and seated at the very base of the... Um, uh, by, by one of the bookshelves that is kind of half hidden underneath the shelf itself. You don't know what it is, but it's a black stone about the size of a, a grape. Okey-dokey. Seems to be neat. It's pretty. Uh, sorry, you Tyber said... Go ahead. Yeah, four Six. inkwells of enchanted ink. Four? I thought it was eight. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say eight? I it was eight books, four inkwells, yeah. four quills. Yes. Looking about, you find... <coughs> pardon me. While there aren't any necessarily interesting things in terms of, like, gadgetry, uh, Boris kind of pouring across the floors, what you do notice is... There are com very strange hidden components as Fleetfoot begins to kind of leaf through and remove the um, the pages from the shelves. Looking at the back, you are able to find kind of jimmied and hidden in the back of one of the shelves a large and jagged tooth, uh, draconic, very much draconic in nature. It would be difficult to tell at this point of what variety of dragon, but it is the size of your head and jagged and seemingly petrified. Hey, Balasar, come here. Balasar, looking through, you would have noticed that <laughs> the room is barren of most things, but there is, as Fleetfoot is kind of pulling out some of the quills, you notice that there is a... What's the best way to describe this? Hold, please. Let me find out. Uh, um, it's, it, uh, how do you... Uh, Tiamat. Tiamat's here. Dallasar, can we put this giant dragon's tooth in your bag of holding? I guess we could. I can't pick it up. You're going to have to do it. You got it. It is heavy. Put the bag over Do you need help? I'm very strong. Well, only if a 23 doesn't work. You kind of... It is it is heavy. <laughs> uh, what you find, Balasar, looks to be a fairly normal hourglass filled with sand. As you pick it up and kind of play with it, you notice that as you turn, the sand that trickles from the top becomes slightly suspended and does not move any further. <laughs> if only we had a relic hunter with us. I think that might be important considering this is the hourglass floor. Where was Hourglass on the map? I'll give it to Boris. It's the one that we touched to get here. Uh, so you think that each one of those is an important thing on that floor? I don't think this is all coincidence. It could be. He was crazy. I wouldn't feel... All those spell books were empty, right? I didn't find, like, a full... Uh, they were all empty. Okay. These are... It seems to have been rummaged Free through, paper. and this is what That's remains. Sheet. Oh, oh, I know. I'm just... Uh... The stone, definitely magical, definitely a relic. You're not necessarily sure what. You'd have to spend more time inspecting. Oh, that's fine. The hourglass, you immediately recognize. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is a... <laughs> I know that. As Balasar oh. brings it to you, oh. your jaw drops. 
This is a... I want to see how much Boris knows. Give me a history check, and we'll go. I'll give you the baseline, and then we'll base the extras off of the check. With advantage. History check. With advantage. With advantage. <laughs> Straight up history check. But do it with advantage. Fleetfoot and Balasar take 18 points of psychic damage as they <laughs> continue to try to break the fourth wall. Uh, I'm unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> Just suddenly. So, history check without advantage. Yes. Straight, straight check. <laughs> okay. Who said without advantage? Well, I mean, I'm proficient in it, so it's it's. It's a relic. I mean, it could be better, but it it. I mean, it's a twenty-five. Ooh. This is the hourglass <laughs> of time stop. If you shatter the glass, this will only ever work once. Could, if you shatter the glass, <laughs> it will. Be very careful. Could you maybe be careful with that? <laughs> Toss it to him. If you shatter the glass. As, as so, so it to me. <laughs> I, will, I will have to put this in your inventory. This is a custom item. If you shatter the glass, you must make a successful arcana check. Did you really throw it to me? No. Well, please tell me you did. On, a, been awesome. <laughs> on a failure, you roll a percentile dice. On a success, you will successfully cast time stop and affect the users, and the spell will enact as normal. On a failure... You roll a percentile dice. Oh. Look, the, sign, the sand floats. Oh, sir, I want to see that. Maybe, maybe just let me... Oh, no, sir, I want to see it. Could I pl- <laughs> thank you. Oh, my God. I cannot believe I'm holding this. This is really the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could, but maybe not. I would have to do that. I don't do that. <laughs> no. I just found some paper. So this is nothing with a kitchen timer, really. <laughs> What does it do? <coughs> it times how long you have to bake pie for. If the sand doesn't go down, <laughs> it floats. You always get perfect pie. <laughs> no, fool, this is the hourglass of time. This is an amazing thing. This does stuff, and if you break the glass, you can only do it once. But well, if you yeah, break the glass... That's there, not magic. You and you succeed way out of at it. Once. You see what's happening inside Alan, of the thing? Is there a way out of here? You see what's happening in back yes, to the we door go back to the into the thing. study, and then the door into the astral hallway. That happens outside. Time stop. Time stop. Is that? Time a, stop. Are you saying? Are you commanding? No, that's what happens if you break glass. All this Let's time go back stop. Up the staircase. Okie dokie, yeah. and I pocket <laughs> this thing. <laughs> Your cigar is cooler. Honestly, with like with the com- the combination of rolls, like that is the only way you would have found those items. So well done. <laughs> all all of those items are pretty fucking significant. So. Enjoy. Oh, even the tooth? Even your oh. book? Even my book? <laughs> it's a good read. <laughs> it's it's mm-hmm. solid. Book. You like the read. Okay. It's first, first edition. First printing. Cool. Okay. You like the t- you're have... immediately drawn to the tooth. Okay. Immediately drawn to the tooth. I'm I guess it's you. like you have yeah, a homing beacon right. to the tooth. Well, I mean, there was a cube above hourglass last time, and I mean... We could I mean, we've see where the cube is. So Should we take you, a net? You make your way back into the hallway, Should and there rest. are two paths. It's a T intersection, so you can go to the right or the left. Right. Oh, did we go? Wait. You have not explored everywhere. Oh, we must go, go explore. The other place, yeah. Okay. I am explorer. This is what I do. And we're <laughs> in it now, so. They want to kill for revenge. Put in Wizard Tower. <laughs> We don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> I'm just trying to find my way to the <laughs> yeah. top. I was, I was not out for this revenge thing. This is just. <laughs> I I think what Tim's nobody killed one of my friends. <laughs> it's easier for us to just go along with them than it would be for us to convince them to just go fight shit and then loot. Yeah. Okay. So you progress down the hallway once more, eventually finding yourself outside of the strange astral projections. In case projections we have to retreat, you. we now know the whole place clear if we do this first. In front of you, there is a closed door that seems to have a crack running through it. To Uh, your left, you have a hallway. Maybe I should. (laughs) Jesus Christ, guys. To the left, you have a hallway that extends down to another closed door. And to your right, so there are, in front of you, it's a T-junction. In front of you, immediately, there is a closed door with a crack running through it. There is a hallway that extends about 20 feet down to your left. And a hallway that extends about 20 feet to your right that curves sharply to the left uh, for about another five feet. While we're walking... Could I maybe use you? You said I was drawn to the tooth. Yes. <laughs> can I ask Fox no. if he knows what that is? You can. I do. He would growl and that's mine. Is that why I was so drawn to it? Okay. 
you would surmise. Keep it safe for now. I appreciate that, Tyburn. Balasar? What? You, you lose that tooth, I will kill you. <laughs> well, I'd die if I lost this bag, so fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you are our great friends. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, so where would you like to go? Door in front, door to the left, door to the right. Door in front, you said it had a crack in it? That I did. Glowing, or just, just a, a crack. crack? It seems to be an aged door. You know, I, I saw these crack. play ones where there was crack in wall, and it was about doctor came and did stuff with... I don't think we should go for the crack. It was bad news. No, we should definitely go for the crack. Is the door unlocked? Do you try it? Yep. It <laughs> opens up. It is a small 10 by 10 room. See, I can't even get him to stop now. He just goes on the head. I don't... <laughs> what you would recognize is mundane reagents that have it's all kind of evaporated closet. and congealed. <laughs> custodial... We did nothing. Uh, Can I check the, the door, door on the right? Did you just call this shit a custodial closet? <laughs> Is there a hose? Can we clean out our... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's all congealed and gross and bad, right? Nothing of import? Not from what you can tell. I mean, you can make an investigation check if you'd like to. Sure. Some time. Can I go to the door on the right? Uh, you can. You walk down the hallway and you... <laughs> it is locked. I think I'm going to find some good stuff. Not it's anymore, it's not. Do I need to take him on as apprentice? This is not the place that you search. You do not, not search cleaning closet. 23. Not much to find. 23. It opens up. <laughs> Tybron and Balasar. As the door opens, you are immediately greeted. By Tiamat. Breath weapon. <laughs> By a nice young lady just offering you tea. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it is a large room. Tea, it's your tea. It looks it's seemingly comfortable looking. Filled with oversized furnishings of red and gold stitches. Red fabric, like a velvet, and gold stitches. <clears throat> the walls extend about 40 feet in height, uh, ending in a dome. Extends about 60 feet in front of you into a set of windows that open up and look over the head over the hedge maze itself. Does this window look familiar? Uh, no. It's not where I saw the person walk out and go turn not this okay. particular. Th that was an open space. Oh, this, okay. is in, this is enclosed. Good question. Thank you. Um, it is sundown outside, oddly. And it is a very different perspective of the hedge maze. And you look to be about five stories up, even though, Boris, you could have sworn you said you were in a dungeon. But the hedge maze looks like a hedge maze, not brambles. From this perspective, well, it's Tybron and Balasar. Oh, that's now. true. I'm, I'm in the yeah. custodial closet. You're being berated for trying to clear out a custodial closet by Boris. <laughs> so what did the head... Why are you um, searching here? This just has some bleach. In the center of the room, Learning. sitting on an oversized <laughs> cushion, you see a red-skinned creature wearing armor that seems to be made of elemental flame. Bronze and volcanic <laughs> stones sit at... <laughs> just arguing about the custodial closet. Flame and, <laughs> and they're just being beat to shit by... <laughs> What the fuck are you doing? I don't know. I'm in a hurry. We're just trying to get... Do you hear that? Yeah, they're fine. That's just ballast. A flame and bronze. Volcanic stone composes its body instead of what you'd notice is skin. It sits cross-legged on the cushion. Looking down in front of it, you see one hand, thumb and forefinger stroking its massive chin. And it is studying a chessboard it looks like. As you enter, it looks up. Why, hello. Oh, is that dragon chess? It is a standard chess board if you'd like to join. I would love to. Who I'm are you? for someone to play with. Uh, my name is Taraz the Fair. Make an intelligence check. The reagents, I'm just saying. They're congealed. Who I'm going over to the This is just what he uses 19. to clean the place up. There this is bleach and ammonia in here. The best you could do is kill yourself. <clears throat> Freedy. <Best. laughs> and I know where they're from. They are from the elemental plane of fire. What are you doing here? Oh, look, they found a friend. Uh, they're talking to something in there. I would love to. Oh, they're reset fine, the yes, board. but... Uh, I'll, I'll listen. reset. Okay. While you're resetting... Balasar is actually talking. So I was trapped here by the wizard Zontal, stripped of my power, and he holds up his 
strange stone looking arm and you see these massive bracers I hope he doesn't blue friend the link he might make friends of just essentially what looks like sapphire and bronze around both of his wrists uh, your move first oh wonderful he moves the pawn on the F square I don't square, even want to go in I don't want to disturb them <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I say you want to do this I've got my chest board all out over here <laughs> He or we can friend. just RP the movement. Uh, <laughs> horse over to the right. Uh, which side? The right horse? Right 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 okay, L shape out? Yeah. Okay, you're jumping the pond. And he looks down and he's, That is an excellent first move. As you speak, you kind of hear the volcanic grumble about his like magma and flame licking the back of his I, I don't. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt your game here. Um, I am literally hitting Fleetfoot. He's making a friend! <laughs> <laughs> Cut to <laughs> bars of but hard cut. <laughs> yes, Tybron. You're you were trapped here by Zonthal. That is correct. Have you seen a weird elf looking guy? Not myself, a real elf, a green dragon, kinda looking for them to kill them. He kind of lazily looks at you. They've been here? No body of that description has How do we made their way. Get up to the top. He leans back. And thinks for a moment to himself. <sighs> I could assist you in reaching and navigating the tower if you so wish. However, I would need to be freed from my bindings. Here's the thing. If we free you, you're not going to go after us, are you? I am only concerned Why with leaving this accursed tower <laughs> and returning to my home. We're going to finish Nothing. the game, though, right? Why was, oh, why was Zonthal so a square. so obsessed with the city of Brass? That's where you're from. Zonthal was drawn to the power from the plane of fire. He sought to bring it forth in new ways to supply the power for magics not yet seen by the circle. It is your move. Uh, pawn just to the left of the horse, two spaces out. Okay. <clears throat> so we let you go. <laughs> you help us navigate. Any chance you'd want to help us fight and kill a green dragon? At this point, I think we would have walked it. So you all are what? Wa I am not. I am <laughs> hiding at the door, just watching, hoping Balasar makes a friend on his own. Yeah, so you, <laughs> Boris is like peeking behind the door frame. Fleetfoot walks in to see what Fleetfoot walks in to see is Tybron standing behind Balasar. Balasar kneeling <laughs> like almost squatting over a very ornate ebony and ivory chessboard. Uh, no. Playing chess. Hey, no. With the uh, with this massive volcanic-looking figure wearing fiery brass armor now stroking his chin, the flames jutting down long hair. Like, imagine Tarzan hair, but flames jutting down his face with a goatee stroking. Oh, what is an interesting move you've made. He takes the left knight and slides it to the center of the board, hopping the pawn. In... Would I... No, does he speak... Intelligence check. Infernal? He is speaking... He's speaking common right now. As he looks up... I mean you no offense. I do not desire to be involved in this conflict. I simply wish to leave. But you can help us navigate. What did you say the being you are looking for looked like? Your move. Other horse out to the left. <sighs> And he kind of grumbles, and you hear this strange, almost magma-like sound of just molten rock billowing over as he considers <coughs> his move. Um, look, it's a big-ass fucking fire giant. Large green dragon. I have not young adult, seen the dragon. Adult, uh, pale, sickly-looking elven man. Goes by the name of Near in Vain. Okay, when's the last time you saw him? And how do we free you? He leans down, looks at the chessboard, picks up the pawn on what would be E, and moves.
moves it forward one. I... You have asked two questions of me. The first... I saw him not but... a week ago. As he passed through my room, he did not free me. He also did not stay for chess. As for how to free me, he kind of... Well... These must be removed. And he holds up the bracers on his arms. Did he say what he was looking for? When he swung by your room? He did not speak to me. and He he's, would not grant me freedom. Well, he's a dick, so... <laughs> and you just kind of hear him chuckle. It is your move. Uh, May I, uh... Horse one space up to the left. Okay. The right one. Got May it. I inspect your bracers? Yes, you wish. Can I holds identify out the arm. while he does that? Is it a ritual cast that you're going to be doing? Uh, are you going to let him know? Yeah. It's going to be kind of obvious, I don't know. I'm say, you just, you've been fucking getting out. He does, I mean... <laughs> Xanthal's a wizard... Wizards cast spells. What are you doing? I'm identifying. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you were uh, using, using my wrist as well. <laughs> what do you need me to roll? That's pretty uh, much that how we've gone. an investigation check. Oh, man. You stare at them. Uh, 15. These are certainly magical in nature. They are made of sapphire. Uh, oh, and they are very cold to the touch. Shit, if you're going to cast that, I'm not going to stay crouched out here for 11 minutes. <laughs> and Boris just kind of <clears throat> totters in. Mm, I thought you were making friends. You were doing pretty good for a bit. We're still playing. I believe that the simplest way of removing these is breaking that line of salt. And he points back at the door frame, and you see suspended just above the frame, about two feet, is a line of thick, solid salt that seems to cross. Oh! I go. Can I just shoot it? Is it above the door? If you so wish. But also, if we remove the bracers, we don't, if there's more salt around. Well, he's badly started to move forward. Tyber, I'll make an insight check. Nine. Seems to be above board. With the identify, I'm looking for a way to specific like a way to break or remove or like dispel so as the spell fades uh he's still kind of stroking his fiery beard with one hand these are bracers of binding they are used to bind uh extra planar beings to and to bind them to this plane so he's physically bound to the plane um these are old as shit you're talking like three centuries so i do i know about them then uh, you would un- you would know what they are, bracers of binding. I mean, you would in theory you would have an understanding of what they do. Um, in terms of breaking, there is an enchantment, typically pretty simple, and kept far out of the reach of the individual who is bound to keep them to the plane. Typically made of a substance found in the home plane of the individual that is bound. Should we let him go? I couldn't hurt. He's a prisoner on another plane. He, I say, wait, he I takes say the sure. pawn on uh, G and Can moves it forward one. Let me try the special pawn to the right. Why don't we just because there might be more. more salt? It's just breaking kind of the line. No matter how line the, long the line is, you've broken it. <coughs> if you free me, I go try to break the salt line. It is ten feet up. <laughs> As you <laughs> fire through it, I could. You have my shield. Part of it chips, but. Does not break in its entirety. So not as easy as it looks. Do you want up on my shoulders? Not all the I time. I shoot it with a regular work. arrow. <laughs> okay. I will make as the arrow flies over my head, make my way over to Boris and let him hop up on my shoulders. Do I hit it? Uh, roll the hit, please. Uh, this is a. It was kind of a firing from underneath before, but see if we break it here. Uh, twenty nine. No, excuse me, nineteen. It strikes, and then you see the arrow begin to shred strangely as it cuts in half and then the you now have two chinks that have been cut into this line of solid salt okay it's suspended 10 feet I do it here again. we go i stand on shoulders i do it again and i take azaran 
and I whack. <laughs> That's a. Uh, so this is interesting. Yep. As you remove Hazaron. Thirty-one. Hear, Don't trust the Afriti. Never mind. What? Bad uh, idea. Was a, What's a bad idea? What was wrong? I, I was a I thirty-one. Got a, I got a, a cramp, and I don't you think we should maybe do this. Shot. You need <laughs> fire through it. <laughs> you slice, and there is but a sliver of salt remaining. Balasar, I think we at this might point, want to stop. Taraz is not focused on the game. He is staring at the line of salt. Yes, just a bit more. I think it looked better all fixed than I tried to fix the salt <laughs> back together. Uh, are we not doing this? I don't think I, we should. Some Boris just suddenly changed his mind. I think it looks much better he this way. Break it in half and said yeah. he got a cramp, but he's oh, moving pretty, pretty well. It is so easy. Oh, to pretty. Free me. Why are we? Why? Why not? Why not let him go? Oh, just got a little note from a guy I know. Okay. It's your move. You know the guy too. And he just kind of growls and he moves back into a very forced smile. With then you now watch flames okay. lick the sides of his teeth as he's staring down at the board. His demeanor. You don't see a lot of change, but that is very much a forced smile. And so he, why? I'm going to go back outside the room. Have you been stuck? Just here this entire how long have you been here? Once Six, I get outside the room. Three hundred and fifty years. Give me reason. <laughs> I was gonna say I would walk out before it's <laughs> like yeah, let's kind of... the shadow. <sighs> Do not trust beings from the outer planes, Boris. You are from outer plane. I don't trust you either. Why I do not, not seek him? your destruction, Boris. He does. Also he seeks out the destruction. Why? Afrita, evil beings, Boris. Maybe they just if not bound <coughs> by an ironclad contract, they will destroy you. So there you go. So we need an ironclad contract? Only you hear this, Boris. Are you relying are you the message? Are you I'm relying. Okay. <laughs> so we need to write a contract. How is I think you're missing the point of the whole thing. Better not to enter into contract, period, and leave him where he is. I mean, we don't need him to help us get out. I think Balasar might be entering into contract as we speak. You just and you see Taraz lean down, looking at the bishop, stroke his, so, and then move the center most pawn forward one square. So maybe we should probably you, get him out of there. Or what does he say? He says, "I will not leave openings for you." I'll match his pawn move. Hey, Balasar. Very wise. Balasar. Yeah. There, actually, in this closet out here, I did find some real sick boots. And I think you should come check them out because they're heavy and I'm not very strong and you can lift them. Oh, really? They were not that boots. Is a they were made of metal. Check. They were greaves. Oh, they were greaves. That Sorry. is a deception check with advantage. <laughs> what is your insight roll? That would be a 32. 32, got it. I can't beat that. Uh, <laughs> insight. Fuck, there are greaves in the closet? Shit! Zero. Uh, I'll, I'll be right back. I, I'll leave the board but, set. What? The board will stay as it is. Yeah, I'll be right back. It's your move. I trust you. Yeah, and I'll walk away. Tibbs, you might want to come help too, buddy. Examining the board. Okay. They're very heavy <coughs> greaves. Can I? We'll be right back. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Anything you'd like to do on the way out, Tabron? I just want to watch the Ifrit and see what he does. He leans down, kind of just... <laughs> His uh, elbow is now resting on his legs once more, and he puts the hand to his uh, chin and begins uh, stroking his fiery beard once more. And as he looks down, you see him study the board, but his eyes are locked on the same chess piece the entire time. He's not. Which chess piece is he looking at? He's looking at the king. His king or Balsar's king? His king. (coughs) I can beat him. Okay, Do so you? T- okay, well, okay, I'll just walk. I, we will. As well, here you go, and I tell you, I catch you up to where I am with Fleet at this point in time. He needs to lose. He needs to lose chess match. I bet. That's what I'm That's, thinking. Maybe. Is that on us, though? He's, I'll beat him. No, don't. He what? keeps staring at his king. Yeah. That's like, what's gonna free he him. He wants you to beat him. That's the <coughs> idea. You beat him. He's free. He kills fucked. us. No, well, that would be so horrible just, trap because th- then you just lose all the. That, that's horrible. If you trap me in the tower and tell me I have to beat, I have to lose to somebody to get free, then I just sit there and lose. Easy to lose game. Yeah, and then you lose. 
and then you become trapped. He's looking at his king? His king. That was the last thing you saw before. That is a horrible right? trap to make it. What if Balasar loses? When you lose. Then Balasar loses and either becomes trapped or gets transported to the plane. No, so That's, Balasar... There's no way to win. The only winning move is not to play. Well, yes, I agree with that, but is he stuck in game now? Who cares if we leave? Can he leave? I don't know, but it's sure better than playing. He's outside the room now. Can you leave? He's outside. He outside of the room? Those we are really in great greaves that were in the closet. No, they're back here behind the cannonballs. So, so which way to the top? Are you poking your head back in the room? <laughs> I'm out of the room. Oh, you're just shouting yeah. out that there's nothing? I'm just saying, I not think we probably leaving. not want to help him. There's Can I shut the door? No response. The door is open and there's no response. I think we just go? I think so too. And Should we leave I the mean, door open or should I shut it? I didn't, I didn't I'm happen. not going okay. to go into the room if you really want to go finish your chess game. It was nice to know you. Or Bell, congratulations. Sorry, don't do I don't it. know which one is best. I know <laughs> that you want to really bad. Can I pull out my grappling arrow? This is question mark. Guys. Yeah. <laughs> and shoot the door. That's like the door handle. As well. <laughs> and try to shut close it. <laughs> if you would like to make an attack roll. Like I'm trying to close the door. Without actually going oh, into the room. Going in the room. Yeah. I can, and as I see him do this, I will mage hand to the door. 27, or 20, excuse me, not 20, 27. It yeah. sh- and grabs around whatever the knob and sh- closes. And you hear from behind this. Maybe we don't go back in there. Why you use grapple arrow for that? Well, that's for flying behind dragon. We could have just closed door. Oh, hey, we can get it back. <laughs> I, and I, I just kind of <laughs> reel it in and <laughs> close it. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. I know you want to play chess, but maybe I should go tell him I have to leave. No, nope. no, nope, we should just go. Next Normally, door. Normally, that's very good manners. Yes, you should. It, not, it's great manners. Not in case with F F F R I T. If you say so, fine. Hazaran said no. And he's bad guy. All right, let's go find the dragon. Just because he's bad guy. <laughs> so we got... So now down the other hallway. Yeah. Yeah, the, the sharp hallway. turn. Okay. So you make your way down the hallway and go to the door oh, once also, more. Oh, also there are no greaves. Sorry, I lied about that. It was just to get you out of the room. I'm never trusting you about boots again. You didn't trust me about boots. Mechanically, whenever you lie about boots, he has advantage on insight. Cool. <laughs> So that's canon. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's easy. Next time we just tell him it's gloves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you know. <laughs> the more you, the more you know. <laughs> Rainbow. Um, I'm sure Fox would play chess with you. And you go to the door. It's <laughs> locked. That next door as you walk down the hallway, passing the storage closet to the second doorway. <laughs> locked. That's the idea. See, but we now, needed you to come with us thing. because yeah, nobody else can open locks like you can right now. open this lock, please. So we had to come get you. You guys suck. Can I give him an inspiration? Nat 20. Because I feel bad right you now. You can. You, now, you are inspired. He kind of taps you on the shoulder and you're inspired. But that was a natural 20? Yeah, it was. What is it, total? How long have uh, we been at this? Total is 28. Hmm? How long have we been wandering around this tower? Feels like it's been about an hour. Oh, I was thinking more like eight. But okay. <laughs> It, I'm I'm telling you I'm telling you that it feels like it's been an hour, but it was sunset when we looked up. We should probably hit the sack at some point. You go to the door, <laughs> opens <laughs> as it what swings open. That that immediately you hear the sound of running sand, <laughs> rapidly running sand. As you enter the room, it is in the shape of an hourglass. You walk into the centerpiece, right? So on the left side it would be the base, on the right side would be the t- peak of what the hourglass is. Seated in the center of each side of the room is a massive stone and glass hourglass. There is sand running from the bottom up on the right side the and the from next the level. top <laughs> down on the left. Each hourglass is 20 feet in height. The ceilings are 35. Looking immediately across the way from you, you see the body of a green-robed cultist charred to a crisp. <coughs> so we break that hourglass. What? Maybe not in here. Well, it stops time. I don't think. So the room is filling up with sand. The, the one of the, the, the hourglass down. on the right, the sand is going from the bottom, racing up, and on the one on the left, it is the top racing. And the green down. cultist is in the center, just charred. 
charred to a crisp. So do we need to get through it before they finish? <clears throat> no, I think something, there's got to be something more. Let's look around before we walk through. Uh, give me an investigation check. Traps. Anybody yeah. who'd like to investigate? 22. 22, thank you. 19. 19, thank you. 21. 21, thank you. I would really just like to assist somebody else if I can. Who would like to have advantage? There you go. My advantage. All right, so you and you as help Tybron as you best. guys walk around, Boris. Looking around, Tybron um, and Ballas, are you discover... Ballas are on the leftmost um, hourglass. Tybron on the rightmost. You see affixed to the base of each of these, kind of in an inset groove of the hourglass, is a chain of that is made of what looks to be gold and diamond inlay. Um, that runs to Fleetfoot as you're kind of examining the center where the charred cultist is located. There is, <coughs> pardon me, a strange set of gears and grooves where both of these chains link. On the top, there is a handle that juts out at an L shape and seems to be able to use to rotate these chains. Is there an. Is, the <coughs> is there like another door on the other side? Nope. You are rotates. finding out just as much as I am. So I you would assume. <coughs> so seeing the thing in this, like, can the chains we follow are it to see like where, like where, like the rotation would like go? So there are the two gears that are set here. Chain rotates around each, and then it goes and wraps around the base in an inlaid groove on the hourglasses on either side, very but, close to the floor. But the the handles in the center. Yep. And that's where the cultist was. Yep. Is his hand still on the the handle? Taking a look at the cultist, you see that his hand is grasping what looks to be a broken and shattered semblance of what was once a blue dragon mask. Oh, well, there's the blue dragon mask. That's broken. It's cracked, shattered. destroyed, shattered. And de- there's, it is cracked and shattered, and you are just barely able to make it out. Um, I would say with your knowledge of, of... Give me an intelligence check. Natural 20. Magical items of that power will not break in that way. Mm-hmm. And the, the metallic council said that they were hidden and couldn't be destroyed, and they needed to be destroyed together. Huh. Can I pick up the pieces? Yeah, if you wish. They are... Um, you can put pieces of blue dragon mask question mark in your inventory. Okay. So is... The handle used to position stuff or to set stuff in motion once it you position stuff? From the your gears, right? It rotates the gears which would spin it. the hourglasses. Okay. Hmm? What was that? I'm going to try and rotate it. All right, make a strength check. I'm going to stand back and observe patterns. I would not be there when he was rotating it. You see Ballister you walk up and kind of... <laughs> <laughs> what was that? 19. 19? <laughs> You make it one full rotation. As you do, all of you witness the hourglasses. The one on the right rotates counterclockwise. The one on the left rotates clockwise. <clears throat> As it does so, you witness the sand halt. Just like in suspension. Mm-hmm. So it stopped while they were rotating, or it stopped after they After Balasar finished his full rotation. Huh. So, does it keep going that way, or is that the end? I think that would switch him. I'll keep going in the same direction. Okay. Strength check, please. Uh, 13. <laughs> you get it about a half rotation before you kind of find it. You find yourself you're fighting against the chain. Another strength check, please. It is resisting your movements. 24. 24. You uh, throw your shoulder into it. This and might be the end of the chain, though. As you do and you rotate, you see cracks begin to form at the bottom of the right most hourglass and at the top of the left, and the flow begins to move rapidly. Yeah, so that's why I asked if that was maybe the end, maybe not force it that way no more. (laughs) Spin the other way. Strength check. 21. It rapidly spins two full rotations back to where you were at the beginning, and you kind of begin to move it before. And as you do, they rotate in the opposite direction. The one on the right now counterclockwise, the one on the left now clockwise. <clears throat> and they rotate and you see them kind of lock into place. The sand begins to immediately swap flow and begin to move quite quickly. 
Anything change in the room? Give me a perception check. <clears throat> 19. Looking about, you don't see any change in the room, but there is a significant shadow change as there is a click, and you notice that what was once dark, you see a rapid change to what looks like a sunrise outside. Is it controlling the time? Hmm. He was studying time magic. Yeah. Can I go out of the door? If you'd like. Is it the same room? Same room. Looking out the mirror that you, or not the mirror, the window that you uh, pass by immediately, you are looking at dawn. That changes time. Yep, I thought it might. I'll spin it backwards. Okay, make a strength check. Should we just break it? Does it just change time in the tower? Eight. It you looks like it's <coughs> outside, but it feels so. almost locked yeah, in place, and you kind of feel something like toying in your back, and you say, oh shit, where the the dented plate mail is located from your previous encounter. It's gonna, oh. That's an inspiration. You already declared the roll. <laughs> For next time. And there's no other way out of here. Not that you can see. And there's not a. Well, back to the elevator. No, we can go back to the staircase. Back to the elevator. Well, no, we have to go back down and disappear. Or it appeared to disappear. We can go back up the staircase, though. What happens if we were to break it? Like, how did he get fried? Like, is he fried fire fried? Electricity fried? Medicine check, please. As you go back and inspect the body. 17. Acid burns. Uh, Less acid, more corrosion. A dragon killed him. Say so we go back to the astral. Medicine surface. check with advantage if you really wanted to do it that way, and I can tell you exactly what you're dealing with. Um, same role. Corrosion. You've seen similar things happen when Balasar breathes his breath, on, at least originally when you began adventuring with him. The green dragon killed him in here. Did it look like he was. How did the green dragon get in here? I don't know. Does it look like he was. Like on his knees begging for his life. He is leaned against the. He was, when you saw him, leaned against the wall facing the gears. Okay. So somehow he got killed. But like. Okay. Yeah. But how? The dragon used the teleport? Like. I don't know. Hmm. Staircase? Rotate, can you rotate? No. Sorry, what happened to the hourglasses? <laughs> Nothing no. yet. Can you uh, rotate it so it stops? Tyro went out and saw that it was no longer it's uh, morning now. dark outside. It was dawn. So it changes time. At least within the... Well, that room. makes sense since this whole floor has to do with hourglasses. So let's rotate it and stop it. Stop what? Put stop the sand. Yeah, put it back in the middle. Right, and yeah. stop. I doubt it stops time literally. 21. Well, but within here, it you're will. able to pull the lever and as you or pull the gear and as you you have to like actually kind of jimmy it back towards you before beginning rotation and you feel you almost feel the um, the gear leave the slot and you're gonna kind of it goes back to what it was doing previously with the sand flowing outside. You witness the sun that is very much dawn dip just below the horizon. So it's pre dawn. But the sand is flowing slower. Back to what it was originally. And that is how we found him dead? Mm -hmm. Corrosion. Dragon. <coughs> he was killed by a dragon. Oh. Not this. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Sorry, I was over there tinkling in the corner. <laughs> that is our designated people. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> Interestingly Smart enough, thinking. no. <laughs> Smart thinking. Um, I mean, let's keep exploring. Like, well, yeah. then if he didn't get killed here, then why don't we just keep going? Um, Balasar, as you're walking away from the hourglass, please give me a perception <coughs> check because you would be the closest one to it. Everybody else has kind of gone to the edge of the room. <coughs> seventeen. Ah, seventeen. Okay. As you look where the cracks have lanced up the hourglass. What is spilling from the side looks to be some of the sand from within, but as you kind of at a glance, no sand is that pure white. 
No sand is that fine. No sand glitters like that. It's pure cocaine. <laughs> you don't know. It might be. Give it a... <laughs> <laughs> Balasar dies. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Going time crazy, man. <laughs> I'm a time addict. <laughs> time, guys. Sometimes it's all we got. Sometimes it's all we need. <laughs> yes, Balasar, please snort the time dust and see what happens. <laughs> what is it? Would like, you like to inspect it, Balasar? I would like <laughs> would to inspect like to the time inspect dust. That'd be an investigation check <clears throat> as you get forward and begin looking at it. Uh, 19. This is ground diamonds. We should take some of that. This is a girl's best friend. Or it was. A chinchilla? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's gr ground diamonds. Do we need ground diamonds? We could sell it. We don't <laughs> not need ground <laughs> diamonds. <laughs> Do I need ground diamonds for any of my stuff? I could probably use some ground diamonds for some stuff. So do we break it? But probably not, because this has to do with time, right? Well, yeah. if we break it, nobody else can change time. Can you just get a little bit out of the... But what if we set it to be going backwards, and when we get out of here, we're all rocking backwards for the rest of our <coughs> life. We can't come back and change it then. You're right. Maybe we just leave it as it is? I don't know. So there is about... There is a pretty significant amount that is poured out of the sides of these just cracks. Some of that up. Oh, well, yeah. It's just sitting on the we'll floor. Take, take a good old bag full. Could you please roll a percentile dice for me? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> well, get some ground diamond, he said. It would be fun, he said. 42. 42. Oh, that no. is the best number, so. It is, that's it true. It's the answer of the universe. You inhale some of the time dust and suddenly you <laughs> everything. Balasar picks up a scoop full of this and as he begins to <coughs> pour it into a You pouch, are the next doctor. <laughs> Balasar's form vanishes. Is what? Balasar. <coughs> Deuces, guys. Do I hear that? <laughs> you hear nothing. You Do just watch, watch Balasar. Oh, shit. Is there a Balasar there that I'm smacking that's invisible? The hand is moving through nothing. I would think this would hurt. I'm about crotch height, so if he's, I don't think he's there. Can you take a look at that dust? I identify it? Try it. It's fun. <laughs> Do I take a look at the dust? Uh, with... Good hands behind my back. But I mean, if uh, he touched it and disappeared, I see that. So why would we touch it? Because that you disappeared and we followed you, Boris. That's what got us here. So I did maybe. not ask you though, but that's true. So I'm going to go scoop up the dust. <laughs> Sound logic. Boris, please roll a percentile die for me. Here, please roll. <laughs> please roll a percentile. <laughs> Let's all get a percentile. <laughs> Damn you with your feline logic. It. I don't know if I want to do it. I was it. waiting for somebody to make the statement. Balasar, it is at this point you feel 46. the sensation of falling up. You watch Boris disappear. <laughs> 46. Are we, for real. If you would like I to don't know. 46. Are we going to awesome. do this? Can you see what it is? I can't. I, yeah, I can see what it is. So I'm, I'm just going to go and up scoop some up does. like this and see Please what... roll a percentile for me. We TPK for just on stupidity. <laughs> 26. That's not a percentile die. He disappears. Oh, wait. Yeah, percentile? Yeah, so a D. Yeah, it's, a D it's two D10s, you not need a D10 to roll, and a D6. Another D10. Well, you roll a 20, roll a D10. Just, oh, because it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20. 30. 30. 20. That's a 20. Oh, is it? Disappears. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fleetfoot disappears. Fox? Oh. I recommend you take the dust. <laughs> All right. I don't know, Tyrone. This is quite outside of my depth. 94. 94? <laughs> 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 the one that's a book. Okay. There was a 50 50 chance. So, the following happens in this order <clears throat> Did TPK? <laughs> and that's where we're going to leave off. Fuck. So, Guys. we'll be starting the next Fuck. campaign. Can I get another water, please? Guys, all my hair is looking real attractive <coughs> right now. It's always bad when Balasar the DM says, so first. in this order. <laughs> so hold on, I have a chart for this. <laughs> oh, God. The original in. You said the sensation of falling up. For Bally. I don't know if 
94 is any better. <laughs> In this situation, is it I better or worse? It I don't know. No. Okay. I'm falling off, guys. I think I'm following you at this point. Yeah, you were really close. I'm assuming we're very close <laughs> to each other. What we got here by following you? Oh, oh that's a good point. Lord. Oh, Lord. Mm. <laughs> oh. It's... What? <laughs> ten minutes to ten, dude. <laughs> Don't worry. You're safe. I think we found the top. Well, this is not for show. Inside. <laughs> I'm, 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 oh, wait, here's Jasmine. Yeah. <laughs> I can show this dragon. So I'm inside the hourglass. So, in the same room? <coughs> you <coughs> find yourself all of a sudden. Let me change the music. Yes, please, I will need a good description of what's happening. So. <laughs> Maybe two or three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I figured. Okay, here we go. Because I was not ready. <laughs> I actually rolled oh, a 26. Fuck. Oh, look, at it was actually a 26 he rolled. <coughs> okay, so you feel the sensation of falling upwards. The rest of you kind of vroom, 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 landing on what <coughs> seems to be this massive stone porch, uh, or the stone um, and granite uh, outcropping that you all have noticed when you originally entered the tower. Oh, you are right. Looking, to <laughs> your, looking around you, you see to your left a massive hourglass that seems to mirror the ones that you had seen, cr cracks and all, that you were in below. The three of you, Boris, Balasar, and Fleetfoot, kind of f -f 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 land in the order in which you um, <coughs> picked up the glass dust. Tybron, you <coughs> land in a pile of sand inside of this, ma or diamond dust inside of this massive hourglass. Am I in you the top part or the bottom the part? The bottom part. You look at this, and it, uh, the sand is flowing upwards kind of past you but you're able to just kind of see the cracks and the lancing throughout in the entirety. It doesn't look like it's necessarily crazy thick, but you are inside of an hourglass at this point. As you do, all of you look forward and see this <laughs> and turning around and sneering at you all. Oh, I was waiting for when you would arrive. You see the face of Nirenvain, the green worm speaker, and as he turns and looks at you, well, I suppose pleasantries are not in order. We could do the pleasantries. Hello, how are you? Here is my card. Um, should I delay longer? Kids, as... <coughs> God, what a thing I'm going to go in. ahead and say <laughs> this is where we pick up next week. <laughs> oh. I'm fine going late. <laughs> Let's roll initiative. Uh, oh, we will pick up right here How next long should week. we delay for getting Tyberon out of shit? Thanks for listening to Natural 20. We meet every Tuesday night to roll dice and try to make it out alive. On behalf of the party, I hope you enjoyed this session.